We're going to start at 4 o'clock. Welcome to our selectors meeting. It's 4 o'clock. We're going to start.
municipal aid to cities unrestricted funding. I attach the law though because it says anything over ten thousand you have to have a public hearing. Right, right. Anticipated and, funds. And we get that one this year and next year. You should get you should get that again next yep. year, but then after that you may not get it because it's only a two year item in the budget. Okay. State budget. Third of the way down, no, about half or a little below, it talks anything over ten thousand dollars. It has to be a public hearing. That's the case with us as we've uh, previously been authorized to accept the monies. Yeah, you did that. Okay. But the um, but I would double check that just to make sure, because I'm assuming what we would do with this funds is just uh, put it into our fund balance to be used as prudent. discussion item for later, Brian, but um, I talked to Mr. Miller 
and um, he felt that if there was that conduit, you guys must have thought that it could be potentially used. If it couldn't, he said that this price would effectively about double because if he had to lay that. No, he put the price of the wire. I thought Chuck had a. Chuck was going to get the, the wire. wire. It's coming. It should be this afternoon. And um, and I told him that he had put in a hundred dollars for the wire. So okay, that, that's that reads kind of funny. Right. No, that's why I called <laughs> and verified with him. So yeah, if he took a hundred dollars off this, he's just going on a three hour uh, at the labor rate. And again, sixty-five dollars an hour. Is it? Right. And then again, if he had to put in conduit and trench it over. Approximately wouldn't hold them to that, you know, uh, repeat that number. So um, he felt I, pretty confident he could get it into the condo that was already there. Cool, that'd be nice. If not, I have some laying on the ground at the house. So that would uh, seem like a good way to go. Uh, but we can talk on that. Consolidated. Yeah. They're all different phone numbers. Okay. It took me a while to figure that out. Yeah, I'm just looking at the same price. I said, okay, where's the trick here? <laughs> Why they can't combine it all in one bill is because of me. Even for right? Doesn't seem to be on the agenda, but we all know that HEB Engineering is coming tonight, right, to do a presentation. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Oh, you wanted to know about that?
attached. You've already adopted the enabling oh, yes. application oh, yeah. years ago, several years ago. So you said you had some more proposals for that, right? For the electrical. Electrical. Yeah. That he, well just the one, but he's he's got the wire included in that price, so that's gonna come out. Yep. And if he has to run the conduit and trench it over, he said that'd be uh, again about the same amount, uh, three hours of labor time, which would be one eighty five. And that was on the idea that you were donating. Yep. Okay. So maybe there's a little bit of conduit material here, there. I don't know, elbows. Yeah, you might need elbows. I have any elbows, but. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Still probably be under 70. Yeah. It's a whole lot less than the correct. Uh, oh. And again, I think a big part of this. The bonus part is we, we establish a relationship with somebody we don't have in the house yet. Yep. That's good. Okay. Good to go. Good ready? Right. Please join us for the play. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thanks for coming, everybody. It's early to start. Um, we'll get right to it because we have ATB coming in for a presentation. So, I uh, make a motion to accept the manifest of $9,153.77. Second. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Make a motion to uh, accept the uh, Board of Selectmen's minutes of October 8th as written. Any amendments? Anything? Good. No? Second. Everything's Second. good? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we did receive the paving estimate. Did R&D didn't give us one? Uh, I called him twice today, but his voicemail is full. It went to voicemail, and since we only have the one, I think maybe we should uh, try the other guy up the street, and as well as I'll reach out to R and D again if you'd like. Uh, is the one we got? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not going to chase the guy R and D. I can stop. Yeah, by. he was supposed to come uh, last week. He got busy, and he did. Uh, I did get him the other day. He yeah. was going to show up this week. Yeah. So, um, uh, but you know, I the one price we got was I thought high, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it was high. So, but again, we could be wrong. Well, uh, we've got the uh, the other fellows right up on 16. We can yeah, Lakes Region Paving. Yep, and I think there might even be somebody else up. Uh, is there another paving contractor in business up there now? Yeah, 16, they overlap. Uh, with Ali Diamond or something like that. Some Somewhere shop up. open up. It used to be a store, it used to be with a, a uh, 
greenhouse is kind of across the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right here. By the storage thing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And back in the back there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know the name. That's yeah, we can try that. Yeah, we got a couple It's of only patch, so. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's only password, so. Yep. I don't know the name of the company, but I can look. I pass it every day. Yeah. Um, all right. We also, uh, we got the electrician's estimate for the work to run those two CAD lines to the back. Uh, for the uh, computer for the police department. And we did receive a municipal aid check. For uh, 30, 38000 and change, I do believe. Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if we have to vote to take that. Uh, I don't think so. You just have to do the public hearing because it's, uh, it's unrestricted municipal aid from the state. Yeah. More than 10000 Yeah. So we can have a public hearing next week. I'll do it. Next something. week, yep. All right. Public hearing for next week. You got that? You can post that. Um, and, oh, and we have to accept, I don't even know who this person is, but, uh, go ahead. It's not my call anyway. <laughs> um, well, her name is Westy. She's an Effingham resident, and, um, she scored the highest on the whole, the process. Okay. So she accepted the job. She's going to have a background check, but she's worked for the court system for many, many years. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. I can bring her in here next Wednesday night to introduce her. She's well, I, I, I would like to accept her after the background check. I don't want to accept her before the background check in case she doesn't do it. Okay. She doesn't pass it. John, will be what she's been given by Diana, and I recommended it, is a conditional offer of employment based on the background check being positive. Okay, so, that's fine. So she can't be hired until that comes back as okay, positive. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. And what... She's, work, she's working right now for the state of New Hampshire in the Public Park Service, and she's worked as a Superior Court reporter before that. So the background check's going to be pretty simple. The state's already done some significant yeah. checking. But there's a process. Yes. And we'll, and we'll, we'll follow have, the process. We'll have Ian do the sure. last of the process. Yeah. No but, problem. But Deanna did give her, she's not hired until she meets the conditions okay. on the office. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Do we want to make a motion uh, to... to, to uh, on a condition of the background check? Yeah. yeah. Make uh, a motion to accept so the uh, appointment mm -hmm. of the deputy tax collector with, uh, uh, with the conditions of uh, as long as the background check comes back positive. Second. Any more discussion? Done. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Are you going to speak to Ann? You're going to speak to Ann about yes. the background? Yes. Okay. All set? Yeah. Yes. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and that's about it. For that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I was going to say that uh, electrician's thing, did you catch the conversation on the side that he, the wire was in that? Yeah. And then if he needs to do more work, it'd be probably approximately three hours more at 185, so... It should be under seven hundred dollars, no matter what. Um, the other estimate we got, John, was over sixteen hundred dollars. Now it was A and B. Yeah, that's what everything though. With the wire. With the wire, the conduit, yes. with the whole nine yeah. yards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. Do we want to make a motion to? I don't think we have to, but. Okay. I mean, that's just a municipal uh, expense. Just do it. Yeah, okay. just do it. Get it done. I mean, if we have to do it, and you said he might be able to run the cab through that. Chase yeah. now. That's correct. He came the other day and I was with him. He looked at it and he thought probably he could get it through the chase. He didn't know what the angles were going to be like underground. That was his only concern. They're long sweeps. Are they long sweeps? Yeah. Okay, then he probably can get them through with no problem. Okay. Perfect. The wire will be here tomorrow. Great. And did we uh, set, well, I guess I'm going to go right into the, the thing. Uh, yeah, I got that. Um, the gas company, what are we doing with that out there? Did they come in? <laughs> well, no one's touching it. <laughs> do you want me to do no, it? No, go ahead, yeah. The septic system provider dug up what you see dug up out there without ever calling dig safe or anything. Yeah. Of course, they probed for the septic tank without uh -huh. ever calling anybody. 
he believes that he found the break. We're not sure. He, he wanted to fix it because he claimed he had a person working for him that had a gas license. Um, he also was a little adamant that it didn't meet code. I checked with Amerigas. First of all, when that line was put in, it did meet code, so it's grandfathered. That's the first thing that he was wrong about. Uh, the second thing is, is Amerigas doesn't care who fixes it, but they do want to have the results of all the tests to the test. them. Yeah. And third, Amerigas indicated that now that the requirements changed, the new install has to meet the new code. Um, it's difficult to determine whether that's going to require that two lines meet code or only one meet code until we can find where the splice was. Uh, we apparently don't know where the splice was. Uh, one of them goes to the generator, one of them comes into this building. Um, so my, I put a call into Amerigas. I feel uncomfortable continuing to deal with a septic guy that's not calling dig safe, just digging all kinds of holes. And send the septic people the bill. Yes. Yeah, that's what I, I was just going to say. I, I don't, I'd I, much rather have the installer, because he's going to have to inspect it anyway. Yes. To do it the right way. This way, if it comes down, if God forbid something happens again, you know, they're liable for it. Anyway, I've got a call in to the operations manager at Amerigas has not called back yet this afternoon. She was out doing something, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming I'm going to hear from her yeah. tomorrow. Okay. And just to touch on one thing, because Brian's mentioning the, the code issue, it's just simply the buried depth. It used to be 12 inches, it's now 18 inches, so it's not some other kind of an installation we should be but concerned yeah, about. It's I'm not really worried about that, because now it's got to come up to code, so right. now they have to do it. And you, we're going to get a reputable well, person just, to do it. I just wanted to yeah. make sure people yeah. knew that, that what it was. It wasn't some, yeah. you know, install like the thing is going to blow yeah. up. It's just the no. depth that it was buried. Yeah. yeah. So that, I would say go forward with that, with Amerigas and send. Uh, yeah, the problem with Amerigas, John, is just, uh, you know, they've indicated that the people they contract to do the trenching can't do that until the end of November or the 1st of December. The ground's going to be frozen by then. What they did say is that if we found a contractor that was willing to do it, they would have techs come over here and lay the line on the same day so the contractor could back Well, we out. should get Ron. He Ron doesn't want to do it. Oh, he Ron doesn't? doesn't want to do it. So I, we're looking... I, I've got a guy, I think I'll do it. Okay. That's, that's the only hiccup that we've got with Amerigas. Okay. And I want to... This is my own personal feeling on this. If you've got a contractor who's willing to come in, I feel we should have dig safe in here before anybody else starts playing around digging out there. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, that's, a, yeah, I agree. that's by the book. And this guy's out there. We got to go for action out there and no dig no. safe call. And that's how we got in this mess, I think. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you'll take care of that? Yes. And you'll take care of the contract? I'm, I'll You're, find one. Okay, perfect. Uh, also, I did get in touch with Mark Lucy about they sent the. Uh, uh, Added that with all the new stuff that they were looking for, DES, the new uh, the stone and everything else, everything that they wanted. I did get a hold of Kennard, and Kennard said that that culvert has been there ever since he's been born. <laughs> so so that's yeah. So it's before, way before <laughs> 1969. And Jim Rhines used to fish in the brook as a kid. So that's I don't want to say I don't want to date him, but it's. <laughs> Within that time frame. So do we get letters from the two of them to be able to send it to the state? Or what's he, the no, he, uh, he uh, Mark Lucy was pretty confident about sending ahead of time. Okay. You know, but I am going to go to Kennard and get, um, well, I can type up something and uh, just say that he can verify that that call that's been there forever. Okay. Not forever, but, you know, as long as he knows. Long enough. So, and uh, that's going forward. I haven't call them today, I was just too busy at work. And uh, I've touched on the patchwork. Um, and that's that's really all I got. I guess I know we have people in here that we're gonna have to push along, so. Well, um, I'll jump right and in. What, okay, thing. we're not gonna have a three hour dysentery? <laughs> dysentery? Or, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> dysentery time? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Hello, Chris. Uh, feel free to set up as we go in here. Don't mind us. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> struggle with this. One of the things. You want to shine right off it? Because that's tough. It's on the it's on the hook. That's okay. I'll try to bounce okay. off that. Um, I've got uh, Eastern Pipe coming out on Friday to do catch basin, so I'll be undoubtedly working with them, taking them around to the various locations that I have. And other than that, I don't have. Uh, did you look in that? In that? Did you have a chance to look at the plants for Avia? No, no, I didn't, John. Because I, I, like I told you, it just has the stuff going out. You know, but it doesn't show. I don't think unless you looked at it further. The plan for out front here, the basin. It does go, but well, they'll figure it out anyway. I'm sure. I did not look at it. Yeah. John, sorry. Okay. Because maybe they could. They don't blow that out, do they? No, they, they just vacuum it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be tackling some of those items. Awesome. Um, and that I really didn't uh, plan on having a lot here because we have uh, some budget stuff tonight, and uh, of course uh, Chris's information be. Yeah. Uh, I did just want to say that uh, before the end of the meeting tonight, perhaps we could talk about scheduling a work session for some point. I was going to talk about that, actually. Okay. Well, good. Then we're all on the same page on that. Because we, I, I, I feel, like I should tell, with these budgets here, to make a, a, an honest opinion in a half hour, you know, we, got, we should have a work session before. We meet with the budget committee on this stuff, okay? Because it's it is it, it gives everyone time to think about it, and then if somebody has another, you know, question or something, we can ask it. Because I really don't, you know, we have a big one here, the library. You know, the other ones are not really all that bad, but the library is a big ticket item, and I'm just, you know, I don't think that I can make a, a, a decisive answer in 15 minutes whether to accept or not. Okay. I might want to need more information. Oh, you guys might want to need more information. Well, I, I set that out as uh, just as times for to schedule people. Yeah, no, no, I see that, and that's great. But we could have expanded those if somebody if they felt we needed to push them out some or whatnot. No, no, I, I, like I said, some of these we might not have to, you know, push out because they're pretty much, you know. Yeah, the, a lot of those I thought were pretty straightforward. Yeah, but I'm just saying, that, you know, like library and we have our budget and stuff like that. We have to really, you know, fire department, police department, you know, I'd, I'd like to have more time before we meet with the budget committee to actually go over it and have a work session. That's good. You know? That's um, a good point because I did want to see the upcoming budgets uh, in advance. Yeah, that's uh, what I mean. So if we get those in advance, we can... Even, yeah. even as in advance enough so we could just do some personal reviews, you know, on yeah. them before even having a work session. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Because and that's the way we used to do it back in the day. Right, because now I'm looking at, got these in my hand for the first time tonight, so yeah. I'd like to have them a little more more time. So I agree with you on that one, John, for sure. Um, and then we had some other work session stuff that's not even budget related, so. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm pretty... Pretty much all set here. So, so what do you want to make well, while we're on the subject of work session? What do you want to have on? Uh, let's see. Well, this coming Monday is uh, ambulance uh, negotiations, contract negotiations. Um, so. Four thirty. We have. I mean, on uh, Thursday we're having a a work session for budgets, as I recall. That's what I've got down on the twenty fourth. So. Um, I don't know, is that the only one we're going to... No, we'll support the budget committee. Huh? 24th, we'll support the budget committee. Because you make your schedule next week for the other second phase of the other budgets on Tuesday. We might have to push it back. We'll go this week sometime. Like I asked you last week why you told the work session and you said you were going to do them in the meeting. I mean... You know, do a work session this week because we've got everything scheduled. People are all laid out, and if you're not not in time, we'll do it without you. Well, I mean, I don't want to do big that. Big. I don't want to do that, but we're giving you ample time to be scheduling people and, and finding out the budgets. So I'm not going to change everybody I've got scheduled for weeks. Well, right now, what we have to get through is tonight's budgets that are in front of us. 
and um, let's see, those are what's being presented to the budget committee next week, right, Dave? We got the next. The 22nd. Ninth. Oh, the 29th. What you've got tonight and what you've got next Tuesday, we, we review it on the 29th. Yeah. So we, we can do the 24th. Yeah, we, we can do the 24th. We're all lined up here yeah. to get done what we need to. What time do you want to do that? Uh, we have a 4.30 scheduled on okay. the 24th. Yeah. Are you going to do it on the 24th, Chuck, and we're going to come in on the 22nd for the budget review? We have um, an early start. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're reviewing the budgets on the 22nd. That's the way it's been scheduled. We can get the those information ahead of time and go through them because I think, again, the ones coming up in front of us on the 22nd are probably going to be pretty quick. Pretty quick. We'll be having an early start on the 22nd, so we should have ample time to go through those uh, before the budget committee meets. But you're not even meeting on the 20 22nd, so we have extra time. We can go through those. And then the 24th, we can use to get into the ones that are probably going to be a little more um, detailed. Yeah, yeah, we're going to probably have a, a deeper review when we're looking at fire and police, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. so we'll, but we'll, uh, Brian, I'm sure we can get all the appropriate budgets they've been submitted, I believe. I believe so. Great. Yeah. The we, only thing that we won't have is the uh, EMS contract. Right, right. Yeah, that's good. I figure we can move that on to we're going to probably have to move that. Oh, yeah. there's no doubt about that. Move that out to your last select board budget. We're, uh, we're trying as uh, the group yeah. of six towns. We all know the impact on the uh, budget, so in the yeah. season that it is. So we're entering into contract yeah. negotiations. And with any luck, it's going to be fairly smooth uh, because we're not writing the book on this. It's been done before. So I think yeah. it's just going to have a a direction, whether we're going for level A or level B of coverage, and uh, I think it's probably worked out. So the work section on the 24th is going to be for the police and fire? Um, that's... Do you have scheduled for the 29th? Well, yeah. We, we, yeah, we'll have police, fire rescue, emergency, forest, um, forest warden, emergency management, um, also, the 22nd, we will be seeing the library, financial administration. Library's fine. Li um, oh, they've moved. That's correct. Yeah, right? Library's moved. Oh, right, but we have the town clerk and the supervisor of the checklist, that kind of stuff, tax collector, treasurer, budget committee. Um, if we need to have something re revisited out of that, potentially, we could move that to the yeah. 24th and still make it. Yeah. Still we'll still have everything. We'll still have everything. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think we'll we'll bring it down under the wire, Dave. It's fine. Yeah. I just think it's a of time. Um, yeah. So I, I guess we'll go with the uh, the twenty fourth, and since the schedule's filling up pretty quick here as it looks through the week, but then we're going to probably need to continue to have work sessions. Yeah. Wednesday nights are a good night for me, should that be the case. Yeah, that's a good night for me. Do we want to tentatively, um, I, I'm not even going to touch it, either the 28th, which is a Monday, or the 30th, um, a good work session. Yeah, 30th, I'm going to be in Concord. Well, why don't we pencil in the 28th of yeah. Monday, that way we yeah. are ahead of the, the cycle with the budget committee. One time. Uh, 4.30 seems to work good for you, John. Yeah, yeah. 4.30 works for me, John? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to meet the 24th, not this week. 10.24. 10.24. 10.28 works, actually. At 4.30. You got that? Yeah. Chris? Yeah. Just send out reminders to everybody. That's all. Uh, okay. And I did forget one thing. Uh, just to let everyone know, and I'd want the town to know as well, is Tom Lumen uh, built the uh, right. uh, bulletin board over there. It would have cost probably about 800 bucks to do it all. He wants his material. He donated his time. You know, I thank him for that. Nice looking. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I just thank him for that. Improve the image of the front of our building. <laughs> and that's important. Okay.
So I, it's all in your court now, Chuck. It would be quick. Yeah. Um, so I handed Brian the $4,500 check today that we received from New Hampshire Preservation Alliance for the assessment grant that we had from last fall. We got it in, so we delivered that today. Um, there was an email that came out from the uh, Pres Preservation Alliance folks. The Board of Directors usually does a trip somewhere in the state in the geographic area during the fall. This year they're going to pick the Effingham Freedom this, this, oh, this area. Cool. So on Friday, November 1st, the Board of Directors of, the, of that organization will be out here. They're going to visit the uh, Preservation Society, the Lord Hill Meeting House. They're going to have lunch, most likely, uh, at the uh, Historical Society. We're working on that right now. Jason, Jason Earl is working on the lunch mm. department right now. Mm. And uh, Mae Williams, basically, uh, the lady that did our uh, National Register of Filing Paperwork, has actually offered to come out and do a presentation to the board about the historic town hall building. Cool. So there will be a fun time for three hours that day with that group of people. I'm also tomorrow morning meeting um, down in Portsmouth with Harbor Light Marketing to talk about um, what can be done for fundraising campaigns for the building. And I'll have more information on that over the next couple of weeks. Is there a time frame on that November 1st yet? That's right. um, they're actually planning on being there at 1130. 1130. Um, it's not open to the public in general because of the volume of people who are coming. Uh, um, so at this stage, they're going to be at the library at about 1130 on November cool. 1. Yeah, thank you, Paula. Thanks to everybody who worked on it. What else you got? Um, the uh, oral board interview for next week. Tim Eldridge can't make it. Um, I think Deanna ought to be offered up to did be we, a replacement for did him. We, I, I, I think I sent you guys an email about either Sharp, maybe. I just like, I, me personally, I don't want to attach anybody that's in this office that has I, work. And I personally don't have a. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's it's not, not a problem for me. It's not. Yeah, it's not a not an issue. No. I mean, but I just don't want to put her in, a, in a, anything or us in a, the office period. I you know reach out to maybe Edith or somebody. You know, I know we only have a week, but uh, and it's a pretty big commitment. Hmm. It is, but it's going to require uh, being focused with a number of questions to be asked yeah. and, and whatever. And yeah, um, I personally think that. Deanna would deliver. No, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I'd, I'd, I'd much rather detach completely from that. Well, the pro some of the problem doing too much detachment, you know, is at least one of not two of the candidates have worked for the sheriff. Um, so he's also not totally unattached. Um, what's what's the big concern with Because, you know, one thing I would say about Deanna is she's pretty oh, focused no, on... All of it has nothing to do personality wise. Yeah. It's my, my own from past experience. You give a group a little bit and it takes a big bite. And I don't want to see her or any us or the, the office get involved in anything. That's just me. I like a clean cut. Get just like we did when we hired Joe Collins. We didn't have anybody from the office was involved in it at all. We had Frank, well, Edith's husband was in it, and same thing with Eric Potter. That's all I'm saying. I'm not, making, I'm not going to belabor it. I'm just, that's what I'm saying. Um, maybe we can talk about this at the end of the night. I want to think on that because I, I don't know. Yeah, you a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No lot between now and then, and we'll come back to it. Okay. And also, did you ever get in touch with the Providence I didn't get Lake? Your email. I, oh, I didn't see it. It, uh, did you ever get in touch with Providence Lake about the seventy thousand dollar loan? Because that's going to affect how it me at going forward on this on these budgets. Because that is a big nut to put out for the people to. How's that work? Do you know what the, the loan? The, the loan, the way I see it, is that we have to appropriate, raise and appropriate seventy thousand dollars in the Warren article, and that's still raising an appropriate seventy thousand dollars 
in taxes, tax money, and then they re replenish the loan. It's the way I'm reading. But do you know that is the question? No, you were supposed to find that out. I, I have. I've been playing phone tag well, with they, uh, well, Kathy Beret, and I haven't got her to I called her again today. She missed me when I was out the other day, so I don't. I mean, if you had an answer, but I, I don't have the answer yet. No, I am playing. I left phone messages, so. No, that's the way I'm reading it. That's all. Well, yeah, I, I don't have that as an answer, so I, I'm not going to say that's how it works yet. I'm, no, I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm she's, not. The, she's the person on the form from DES yeah. to contact on that, so as soon as I can get it. But, I mean, that does have a significant impact on it, the budget. It could, and that's if, why if, I want to know how it actually yeah, it's, it's a pretty new program, so I don't yeah. think there's a lot of uh, knowledge base uh, in the community about how that works. So I don't want to give out misinformation. That's no, not, that's I'm fine. Just not ready to discuss it because I don't know how it works. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I know that's good. I just thought that you've got in touch with them. I, that's okay. I'm not for lack of trying. Okay, no problem. Uh, that's all I had, John. Okay. Wow, time is fair. Anything else? Any old old business? Any public input? Oh, no. Public comment. Something else. Public comment. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, uh, Tom Hot School Street. I just uh, wonder if you guys couldn't sit. I know you got a lot on your plate, but a transfer station. Maybe one day a year coincide with, you know, the uh, roadside cleanup at a free dump day up there. Other towns do it around. Seems to be working out well. People like, you know, just you consider it. Just one day a year. Well, other, we can, other towns do it? Yeah, yeah, Austin does it, and, uh, and Wakefield does Wakefield, yeah. yeah. I don't know, I kind of like that. I think we're definitely in with the <laughs> so transfer station this year. Might give the people yeah, maybe maybe an option. option. We'll just get three empty demo dumpsters ready. Well, we do it anyway that weekend if you coincide with the right side right. cleanup. We, we typically work. bring in a, a extra overload one. Yeah, five and fifty hour area. Yeah, that might not right, be a bad so idea. Do it, do it around the earth, they do it with the cleanup. That'd be a perfect Yeah, idea. yeah, absolutely. Oh, great idea, Tom. I, I'd support that. I like that. Yeah. Okay. You got a free day, uh, Tom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Sean, Jack Russell. Uh, for the Budget Committee on the 29th, you had put out on camera that the chair of the school board was going to be doing a presentation, we had a discussion on that. Yeah. He's not going to be doing a presentation on the 29th. We wanted to expand it more than what the time allots because of our agenda. Oh, okay. So I've got to work on a new date, and I'll let you know on that. But he will not be doing a presentation on the 29th. Okay. That was Jack Windermere. Yeah. So is that on the website or something, Chris? Did that make it that far? No, not yet. Okay. So we won't put it on. Any other stuff going on? Any other public comment? No. Any? I just wanted to ask Ed um, if we shut the back light off here, does it, does the camera work good with this front lighting? I have no problem. You can do whatever you want. Oh, all right. Well, some I think somebody said there was a problem last time somebody came. He's got the technology. Nice. Cool. Okay. Front light can go. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah you're you can do that, that Chris. Allow you. There you, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. Easier on my eyes. Yeah, for sure. Good. All right. Um, Chris Fournier with HEB Engineers, and we're asking you to come in and sort of give an update on the Snow Road Bridge and a little introduction and an update on where we are. Um, did you guys want to say anything before I went and got going? Just thanks for coming in, Chris. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I did want to give an update on Elm Street uh, Bridge. Um, so town contractor with Mike Hansen, Hansen Bridge to, to get going on that bridge. And um, as we know, he was pretty booked up for this season and he he's, remains booked up. Um, but I uh, just talked to him today and he has this scheduled for probably a late March start on Elm Street, um, April, weather dependent. Um, that way he can get in there and do a lot of the prep work uh, in time. And then by the time he gets around to doing any cast concrete, the weather has warmed up just enough to meet the temperature requirements of casting concrete without having to do any heating or anything. So it's it's his first project that he has slated for next year. Nice. So I just wanted to give you guys a little update on the progress there. 
So we'll work over the winter to get his submittals and every all the all our ducks in a row before before spring comes around. So that's good. Awesome. Alright, so snow run bridge replacement. Um, so I think we all know where it is. Uh, come down 153 from 25, uh, off another to the transfer station. So just to, to regurgitate the, the condition of that, uh, DOT has that as 84 vehicles a day. I know it's very dependent on when, when the dump, uh, when the transfer station's open. So that's, um, that's there. There is a detour, but it's not suitable for truck traffic. Just a really local you know, gravel road. Um, best we know, the culverts were put in there in 1972. There are four six foot diameter steel culverts there. Um, and then DOT has rated their condition as serious, which a scale out of uh, 1 to 10 is, is uh, a 3. And um, it's been on the red list since 2015, so there's it's about time to do something about it. Um, currently, it still has a, a low, legal load posting, uh, so that's what the E2 means. There's two pages of definitions of what satisfies an E2 rating. Um, that's basically any legal load, so not certified loads uh, and not overweight loads, um, but that's that's the legal loads. Um, so just an image, I'm not sure how many of you trudged out there <coughs> looked at it from this angle, but you can see the four four openings with the uh, stack stone uh, head walls, and it looks like pretty identical on either side. Um, as you'll see in a few more photos, many of these stones have shifted, fallen out, have vegetation growing through them to push them out. Um, evidence of so roadway soils just le you know leaking out through uh, the head walls. So there's been many issues um, identified out there. Uh, as you can see, the pavement's pretty at least seal sealed. That's good. That's, that reduces the amount of water that gets into the, the gravels underneath the road and able to migrate out through the headwalls. Um, but there's still some of that happening, um, as, as indicated by the depressions in the pavement at, at the roadside. Again, debris clogging up has been a significant issue as we've, uh, as you guys have lived with this, this, this crossing. And sort of just showing the vegetation growing through here and the voids that um, has shown up through the years. And then, it's tough to see here, but there are, there's just holes galore in the in the steel culvert. We're pretty much mostly at the spring line and below, uh, where it gets wet and dry, and wet and dry, and wet and dry. That's where a lot of the, the corrosion happens. Is so there's it, pure rust holes right through the culvert? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. And most spots where it is, you know, there is steel remaining, you just poke a screwdriver right through it. This, that's why it's the three serious condition rating. Um, <laughs> So we want to attack this before anything more substantial, uh, substantial uh, deterioration happens. Um, and again, missing stones. Um, so that's, that's destabilized at this point. Um, so the proposed plan that we've, we've um, the town has engaged us to move forward with this proposed plan um, a previous wetland permit has been achieved by the town, and that was for a roughly 40-foot um, span bridge. So uh, rather than go through the effort to, you know, completely get a new permit, which is a pretty lengthy exercise, um, especially with the new wetland rules coming out this December, um, what we're going to do is we're in the process of amending that existing permit. So as long as we remain within their impacts or 10% or above their impacts, the weapon permit can be amended. So this proposal at this point has a 50-foot clear span bridge, which pushes those abutments further back, uh, which only acts to reduce the amount of impacts that were previously permitted. So we, we're, we're able to stick within the previous permitted areas of weapon impacts. Um, so you can see the grading still occurs, uh, is shown from the existing culverts, but that new clear span is this entire rectangular space. Um, and this plan also shows proposed um, approach guardrail um, to, to meet requirements for safety. 
So when it's all said and done, Chris, the culprits disappear? Disappear, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll have a, a sort of representative photo. Okay. Of an extremely similar bridge project that we that we did uh, 10 years ago. Um, that will just be a rend basically a rendering of what it's going to look like out there. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, so we propose, I guess, a um, we're proposing a 24-foot curb to curb width for the bridge. Um, that is the minimum um, requirement for a two-lane bridge. Um, you can go narrower if you so choose, um, but this is this is sort of the state. This is the standard. That, that yeah, we're about should. 21 now, right? Yeah, give yeah. or take. I think it's like 21.6. Okay. But it's a snow removal issue as yep. well. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and the type of bridge that we've that we've talked about here is. A steel girder supported bridge with a, um, a timber, a wood deck. So it has a, basically a thin wood deck supported by these structural steel timbers, um, a crash tested timber rail um, to, to keep everybody in. Um, the rail that's out there now might stop it. <laughs> so this will be an improvement. Um, and then what we propose to do over the timber is a uh, basically a coat of base pavement to achieve a crown so that we get water to shed. Then we put a barrier membrane on top of that, which is basically like a roof ice and water shield. It's a you know, rubberized membrane to keep to really keep the water out. And then there's a wearing course of pavement that goes on top of that to protect the membrane. So it's a it's a three layer system that. Um, uh, was developed um, by the federal government to uh, protect the timber bridges that they install. Um, so it's, it's a pretty standardized method of construction, as well as, I mean, the timber bridges. Timber decked bridges are, are pretty standard as well. Um, so I thought we might show you a photo of really the, the identical bridge. This is a 55-foot a span uh, steel girder timber deck bridge. Uh, that was finished back in 2009, and um, this was through, we've talked about the State Bridge Aid Program, but this was done through the Hampshire DOT State Bridge Aid Program, um, and, uh, you know, put out to bid, um, the, and in fact, the lowest, the lowest bid contractor that we got on this was Mike Hansen, uh, who's also working on the Elm Street Bridge. Um, and that was completed back in, in 2009. So this, this particular bridge, um, has a sheet pile supported substructure uh, with some cast in place concrete bridge seats so just to accept the, the steel stringers from the bridge uh, these are steel steel stringers uh, and this is that wood uh, crash tested railing right there um, a view from above the town of Ellsworth opted to go with a galvanized steel rubber rail um, just in, a, in an effort to Protect the wood from like abrasion crashes, I guess. Um, so maybe it's close to miss this. Um, and in fact, this was a bridge to three houses at the time, so it was a, a, a pretty much a dead end, pretty low volume road. Um, but again, that has that paved surface, um, and um, just you know, was able to pull these photos up to show you very, very much exactly what it's going to look like. This is much narrower, however. This is an 18 foot. So because it was to three houses, um, very rarely the State Bridge Aid Program and DOT allow uh, variations from that width. Um, and this was one of the cases where they saw, look, it's three houses, there's you know, very few people going across there. There's not going to be a lot of two-way traffic at the same time, so they allowed this to be, uh, it's considered a one-lane bridge uh, at 18 feet. So we're talking about two-lane bridge at 24 feet. Which is the minimum width for a uh, legal two lane bridge. Um, are there any questions about the sort of the proposed materials here? Or, I mean, lifespan is a common question. So, uh, we're talking with the treated wood 50 year lifespan for the, for the wood components. Um, so, in 50 years, that wood could be replaced, steel refurbished a bit, and then um, it could go from there. One of the things we've touched on before, in doing a replacement on the guardrails with the wood, it's it's more economical, isn't it? It's cheaper to do replacements. 
Yeah, at least, yes. I mean, town forces could go buy a piece of lumber and <laughs> put it back there. So it is, it is a modular basis. Um, I mean, these are specialty timbers, so they do need to be ordered, but um, they do ship replacement parts as needed. Um, because these are they're standardized uh, bridges, they, they're, they're just standard off-the-shelf parts. Um, so they can be procured pretty easily. Nice. So, yeah, it gives us sort of an economical solution to that site. You know, I know, um, let's not talk about the numbers, I guess. So, um, you know, we've, we've sourced out, we've talked to, I mean, we've talked to Mike Hansen because he was, we're working with him on the Elm Street Bridge, and then he had completed this other bridge. Um, so, in concert with him and suppliers and some of our own bid data that we have, um, we've come up with this approximate construction cost. It's we hope that this is a slightly conservative number, but I, I, I like to tend to be on the conservative side of things than, than to be showing aggressive numbers. Um, but approximately there's a, um, a $20,000 sort of base cost for that 50 foot span, um, roughly with a 20 foot width, that, that's where that base cost came from. Um, we found that it's gonna add about $20,000 to bump up to that 24 foot width and really achieve a two lane bridge, 20 feet is tight. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel on that existing bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah 21 it's inches. Tight, and it's, yeah, well, being a foot and a half narrower would, would not be. Yeah, it would make it even more tight. So we are recommending moving forward with this, this 24 foot width, but did want us to just let you know that that is a possibility. Um, DOT, when they come out and do their annual or their biannual bridge inspections, they will ding you on not having a a proper width bridge, so it will be noted as um, something non-standard. Um, so that, that could be a, a liability issue for the town. I'm not sure. But. Well, Twenty thousand dollars for the additional width over fifty fifty year yeah. lifespan. Yeah, yeah, that's that's reasonable. Yeah, that's very reasonable. Yeah. Um, so not included in this base cost was the approach guardrail. So we've um, heard it was pretty expensive. Um, Steel prices are uh, what they are at this point. Um, so we estimated about $40,000 for the proper approach railing. This this had only the uh, bridge rail included with it, so we've, we've added this number. So that's the timber bridge rail, and this is the rail that approaches the bridge. Um, From either direction. Yes, required for current safety standards so that there is not a blunt force in, impact on the end of the timber bridge. Because that, that timber bridge is pretty rigid, that can impale a car um, and cause injuries. So that that way, we're trying to deflect people rather than uh, have any blunt impacts. So can I? Yeah. Just gonna on that guardrail. I, I've seen some other plans recently where the guardrail was it wasn't really narrowed down to DOT spec. This is what will be used. It was kind of a wide spectrum and. Uh, uh, I have concerns. So, is this going to be a certain type of guardrail that's going to be, uh, this is what will be used, or is it going to have a wide range of guardrail to be used for that approach rail? No, these are, these are specific um, DOT specified crash tested assemblies. Okay. So, they're purchased by the unit. You, you can't modify them, that's just how they. They come. Correct. They're standard parts. So that's <laughs> the item that we would expect to see because that's what you typically would see. That's what we're going to end up with. Yes. Not yeah. some yeah, variation. It's, it's not even bid by the linear foot. It's bid by the unit. So okay. when you when you ask for something, bid on, I would like four units of approach rail, and I would like four units of terminal end unit, and it's a very specific approach rail and very specific terminal end unit, and that's what you get. Yes, the, the last bridge plan I saw for that bridge did not have units in there, specifically in the guardrails where it was just open season for what could be applied. Okay. Some things there were meeting DOT, so that's it's good to know. We're gonna safety. It's safety is paramount on these. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and then I guess the last sort of uh, I don't really call this an option. Membrane pavement is an option. You could 
leave that as an exposed timber deck and put down timber runners, the 50 year lifespan will just go, you know, don't, <laughs> the 50 year lifespan won't be there if that happens. Um, so really that, that $20,000 is, is well spent on that, that aspect of the project to keep your water off the wood. Well, I think for plowing and <clears throat> comfort yeah. and travel and the whole, yeah. it really would probably work. Yeah, yeah. we still come across plenty of, of timber runner uh, bridges, but um, mm. that's fine. So, yeah, we do, we do think these numbers are a little, cons a little conservative, but um, we're looking at a construction cost of 280. And then there should be an engineering oversight cost on top of that, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, that we haven't yet finalized that. But I just want to make sure people are aware that there's a slightly higher cost because of the engineering oversight. Correct, yeah. So, yeah, in the budgeting process, we'll need to account for that as well. But I um, wanted to talk about the timber bridge aspect of this today. That's, that's, that's where we think we're at on the construction cost. Can I ask a question? Sure. What's the maintenance cost on a wood timber bridge compared to a steel? Is there, is there more to maintain a wood? No, I mean, really the maintenance, um, I think with any bridge, you want to keep get the salt off it in the spring. So any any bridge. Would, does the wood have to be sealed like every five years or three years or whatever, or is it? Uh, concrete needs to be sealed as well. So on a on a typical concrete bridge, the concrete curves and exposed concrete surfaces need to be sealed with saline siloxane every year. You know that's what's recommended, as well as being cleaned off, um, ex expansion joints cleaned out and maintained. Um, I was just concerned more about the wood. Yeah, yeah, no, as long as nobody's crashing into it. Yeah, um, you know caps on the end posts are, are generally a good little add-on. Um, but really washing the, any salt or sand you may use on the bridge um, in the spring is, is has, should be done for any bridge. Um, and then uh, sealing of the pavement. You know, the pavement has been sealed, so that's good. Um, but getting on a regular pattern of sealing um, and then possibly doing a mill and overlay on the, on the pavement just keeps the water off the wood. And that's, that's the maintenance routine that's associated with these bridges. Thanks. So what would, what would the off-the-cuff price of that, the PM part of it, the preventative maintenance part? Of yeah. Uh, ballpark, I, I'm not going to... No, I know. Uh, I have those numbers. So it's a matter of getting washing salt off or or putting a sand or... Uh, yeah, get a, get a hose up there. I'll show we usually do the fire department. Fire department, fire department, fire department. sprays it down. And it gets rid of all the sand on it and everything else. Right. And yeah. And sometimes you get the street sweeper in. Okay. Yep. The other uh, thing would be getting the seals. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm. I don't know what that's going to cost you. But yeah. I, don't, I don't have a question. Yeah, I guess it's comparable to what a, con a, a concrete bridge would be. Because the seals are gone, not really going to be any different, right? Than the uh, <clears throat> the seals that would. Expansions. About the road, yeah. right? The expansion joints, they would be the same. No, because the steel, gear, steel and concrete generally contracts and expands at the same uh, coefficient. So that expansion is. So, what, what would the cost to reseal or maintain those seals? Do you have to pull the seals out and replace them? The, ex the expansion, expansion joints. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, those are more frequent. Okay. Um, but. And that's the same thing we're going to do for like Elm Street. It's the same type right. of joint. Under. Yeah, because that never was done on Elm Street. That, right. Well, we Elm, did that, so I'm just Elm Street's a different animal. That's yeah. a longer bridge and it's curved. So it, it, um, it doesn't contract and expand uniformly. So it has a special type of joint that allows the, mm -hmm. the curvature. Because um, it'll expand more on the longer side than it does on the short mm -hmm. side. Um, but that's a more expensive joint. Yeah. This is a, just a rubberized. I, I, guess the, I guess the question would be, yeah. Maybe what we're trying to get at is, what does it take to clean out that that expansion joint just to maintain it? Is it just simply... There's nothing to clean out. It's rubberized pavement. So yeah. just wash it off, just like the... Just bridge. it. Just yeah, take a, a fire hose and wash it off. Yeah, it's the rubber, it's, it's, it's rubberized pavement. That's the expansion joint material that we, we propose on this. If it cracks, you heat it up with a blowtorch, and it melts back together. Nice. Oh, <laughs> Can you can you edit that on your tape there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah.
Yes. Talk about those rub rails. How much does 100 feet of them cost? How much? I think those are like $15 a foot. What's that again, Steve? The rub rails. The steel. Oh, yeah. steel. Yeah. Uh, do, yes. you, mm -hmm. do you find those Narrows your uh, recommended? Because I'd worry about plows and the big uh, rubbish trucks. They hit any of the wood, not on purpose, obviously, but in a, in a skid situation. And uh, we've got a we've got a major repair going on there for the for the wooden members. Yeah, if there's an impact, I mean, this this isn't going to help you in an impact scenario with with fracturing the wood behind it. This is more of a, a rub, you know, a buffer, not a not a hit, but a rub. Keep you in your way, kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of Are you you recommend something like this for the type of bridge we'd have, or not? This was put in partly to satisfy that that one lane <laughs> require, you know, narrowing of a one lane that it is a narrower than usual bridge. Whereas we're meeting the legal two lane width in this situation, it's not necessary. So you're saying that would be not recommended no. for us? No. Okay. No. Yeah, well, we've not included it at this point. If that discussion happens, that would be... Well, we've narrowed down our travel lane significantly from the 24 to probably similar to what we have now or less, right? Because those seem to be in a foot and a half. No, that's only... No, uh, those are just the, the W the W shape. Yeah. And I think that's six inches. Yeah, but is it... Oh, it's... How close is it to the timber, though? Is it right on it? Is it mounted it's, to the timber? Yes. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, it's... it's and the, uh, the timber rail assembly is the crash tested assembly. The crash testing rating does not include the, right. the steel. That's okay. really just to protect scuffs from what if, digging up the wood. What effect is likely to happen if you had that against the wood? Is that going to, you know, accelerate rot or whatever? Or, you know? No, I mean, there's, there's some additional holes, but uh, the holes come pre-drilled. From the factory, yeah. um, so those are pre-treated. They're they're, treat, they're drilled and then treated at the factory before they come down on site, not field treated. Um, so any hole gives you more possibility to hold water and start some internal rot if you don't have good pressure treatment. Um, and that could be put on any time, right? Yeah, actually that's true. Yeah. yeah. If you find it getting hit, I'm not worried about the plow. How long? Yeah. How much longer is the rail than the actual bridge? Like if the bridge is 50 feet, does the timber rails extend beyond that 50? No, the timber rails will stop right at the end of the bridge. Okay. And then you'll transition into the steel approach rails and terminal line units. Gotcha. Do those timbers go all the way down into the water? Nope. They, uh, yeah. So they extend, one. they extend roughly down to the bottom of the steel girder. Oh, okay. uh, so they're connected into the curb and the deck here to provide resistance for so pushing, pushing so out. So then underneath the girder, there's nothing. There's, it's just, open space. Water. Yeah. Open yep. flow. Yeah, it's going to be a huge... That's why it looked, to me, it looked a little... Yeah. I was wondering. Yeah, like so on the right there, you... There's stuff going all the way down. No, no more beaver debris in the bridge. Yeah, this it's is the abutment. The cold this, is, this is the abutment on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, the debris, yeah. <laughs> that'll, that'll go away. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Clock that thing up nice. We didn't talk about what's going to, is this going to go at the same place the old bridge is? And if so, what's the cost of removing the old bridge and how long a period of time is the road going to be shut down? Yeah, du duration is uh, definitely something that we need to talk about. It is located in the same location as the color rates right now. Um, and yeah, closure, closure, we should discuss the length of the closure. Um, the tighter of a window that you uh, force a contractor to hit, so if you tell them you want it done in a week, yeah, they can do it if they work 24 hours around the clock. With, for crews, but the cost is going to escalate. If you give them a reasonable amount of time, that's your most cost-effective time. So, um, 
Yeah, we do need to figure, I guess we haven't talked about that quite yet with the board of the amount of time that would be allocated to not have truck traffic up there at the transfer station. Is there is there a standard or a normal amount of time if everything is working correctly? Yeah, I mean... Three weeks, two weeks, four weeks? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I would go... They're all prefabricated elements, which is which is pretty nice. Um, I would tend to go in the four to six week range. Okay. Which can get a little hairy for transfer station. But we, um, this would be undertaken in low flow yep. season, so late summer kind of thing. Right? Like summer, yeah. Late, yeah. I would say late spring, summer is generally uh, what the ES considers low flow. Okay, yeah, yeah, I thought they started with uh, July 1st. Is that June 15th? Okay. Yeah. And so we have good travel then to go up and over from the other side at least. Yep. And that, those are time period, yeah. yeah. Your, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Your figure is 280000 That's based upon that there's labor in there. Okay. You had a question about demo. Demo is included with this. It is included. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's removal prep. So so that's like with no overtime, no special shifts, that other kind of stuff. That's None what that, that is in included. The, the, the town is pretty much buying a product, however it gets done by the contractor. Is, is how it needs to get done for that price. I mean, uh, you know, uh, the way... I'm, I'm not understanding. The estimated construction cost. Yeah, that's everything. It's all in. All in. That's, everything's in there. Right. Construction, for construction. What I'm saying is if we decided to speed it up, we would be on the hook for more money. That would be on us. It'll be, it'll be escalated by the contractor's price. So if you ask them... It, it would bit, be higher, Steve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You asked for something that wasn't in the original plan. Oh yeah, it's a, I know. I know what a change order is. Yeah, I yeah. just want to. So, this but, is but that's a normal construction. Reason. Yes. That's what what you're what you're used to seeing. Yep. For price. Okay. I okay. understand your question now. Yes, it will be higher if the time is crunched. Right. Yes. I think we yep. should know that. That will be reflected in the contractor's pricing if the time is okay. crunched. Yep. No, um, for me, I've, I've kind of gone through a bunch of this stuff before, so I'm kind of I'm coming up with questions, yeah, but I probably already right. know the answer. The, the time frame, you know, we're, I guess, a little tight here, but uh, design permitting is an ongoing task. Uh, so some of the plans you've seen developed are plans that we've come up with at this point. Uh, bidding, we're looking to conclude that in January in time for this wow. solar panel. <laughs> yep. Yep, so we're, we're, we're tight to that. So that would mean, you know, we should be advertising relatively soon, um, you know, late November, um, and then anticipating construction starting next construction season, so low flow time periods of late spring or summer. And the importance of that, I guess, is reflected in the culvert's condition right now, because that, like you said, there are three out of a ten, they've got considerable section loss and they are all structural units of the bridge, so things are not good at the bridge right now. Yeah, I mean, I can't give a lifespan on their main culvert. It could be tomorrow, it could be, you know, a year from now, it could be longer, but it's just an unknown commodity at this point because of how much rust has happened. And all four of them are in similar conditions to the one you showed on the... Yes, yeah, that was just rep representative photographs. So. Good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else for questions? Okay. Not a good day. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thanks, Chris, for coming yeah, thank in. Thank you very much, Chris. Yeah. Explaining us, getting appreciate it on camera, at least uh, with Ed here, gets it out to the public so folks sure. know. So we really appreciate that. Good. All right. Thanks. Super. Awesome. The best of a bad situation. Came with that news last time on the L Street Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make up for it. Good. We like that. <laughs>
be nice to get a, a copy of this book and get town meeting. So, probably during the summer. This way, we can, you know, if we have to, it's go into it's closed in the summer. Showing the people that team is so. that's, that's potential. Um, John was just saying he thought that would be nice to have potentially a town meeting if that was to inform the folks who come to vote on it. I yeah, it'll be real pricing at that point. Yeah. Oh, it's the right time meeting. Yeah, in March. March. Yeah. Yes. We'll have two goods in hand at that point. We'll know who the contractor okay. is lined up with. And so that yeah. would be an yeah. option. More information. Yeah. So great. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the more visual. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's just long enough to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. If you want to more, so. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. yeah so works. he's gonna. So Chris, you're gonna provide that for us, the PowerPoint. I can. I would do it rather closer to that date so that we can. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think it means that we can we drag you in on a Saturday morning. Oh. <laughs> uh, that would in a perfect world, but he just said, you know, that when you crunch contract, you know, the price gets a little bit more. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was uh, Saturday, the surcharge. Uh, no, that's fine. I've done that before. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll give him the date. Yeah. Mark, you're on. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, we'll buy you a cooking or a cookie or a muffin from the. Uh, I'm not the far P away. I'm just on the road. PTO. <laughs> okay. Just on the road. All right. Okay. Great. Well, we are ahead of schedule. Yeah. I figured it would be another 20 minutes before we yeah. were opening. Well, you want to put Grace on first, rather than You know, you know, you yeah. know. You show up early. Yeah. That's up to Grace. Hey. Lose, you lose. Fast, you come. Hat, you're ahead on. Well, you know what? I'd like to have her here. So I can uh, give her a call and say, come on over. If you give me 10 minutes, I'd be happy to go on. Sure, sure. So, yeah. Let me, let me do that. I have half a posse here. Oh, yeah. Eric is here, too, if you want. Oh, yeah. Eric's here. I am. Oh, there he is. We can get Eric if you want. John, uh, just to fill a void here, I would say that we could probably move forward on the town forest. All right, that's right, yeah. Yeah. And, and Eric is here. We can put, put, put Eric on now. Yeah, we can put Eric on now. Oh. Yeah. All right, well, the town forester is pretty easy. He's been, for the last 20 or 25 years, they think he's been at $1,000. Done. And, uh, make a motion. <laughs> yeah, make a motion to accept the, the, the budget for the town forester. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Eric is here. We'll take what part of you is left, I guess.
What did we spend this year? The last time I looked at your budget, I think it said zero. Zero. And um, there's some reimbursements that I need to put in that will be in before the end of the year. We had two of the RSA books that we were never charged for um, by the office. We took, you know, the big, we took two of them. Um, I believe Elaine also took one, but hers, I believe, was charged to planning board since she's a member of that board also. But both Sandy Finn and I took copies of those books this year, and we were never charged for them. And I believe those are $15 a piece, because where the 60 came from was if we had a full board and everybody needed one, four books at $15, this is the 60 bucks. I thought they were 10, but I won't I mean, quibble I, over that. You know, I, 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 I don't know. All I know is we were always asked, how many books do you want for next year? And we always say four, because potentially if we have a full board, that's how many we need for everybody who's got a full seat to have one. Um, the association dues will also be coming through. We just got the renewal notice in the mail. Um, and there will be $70 for ink. Uh, you going to add that? Hmm? Right, this is what we will have for this year because the budget versus actual says zero because yeah. you know I have to submit my reimbursements and some of this other stuff either hadn't come up yet or wasn't charged to us. Um, and then there was one conference for $69.31. So, and the mileage will be $77.72. I think the personnel policy says you've got like seven or ten days to submit those things. I'm not personnel. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think it covers boards, committees, and commissions, which is a little extreme. I think we could lighten that one up a bit. Um, okay, well, where do you see this going uh, next year? Because you looks like you spent 421 last year. Right. Um, well, you're not showing a lot of expenses right. this year. But my understanding is we're supposed to budget for what there is potentially, not sure. what was actual. So, books and publications is assuming four copies of the book. Mm -hmm. Association dues, that's Preservation Alliance, that hasn't increased in years, so we're assuming that will remain the same. Uh, postage, we have not had a chance to do it this year, but we're looking to do something similar to what Rebecca does for zoning. Do a mailer card to property owners in the historic district, sort of reminding them you're in the district, remember you need mm -hmm. to come talk to us if you're going to be doing anything major, that sort of thing. Um, and then also if we have any public hearings that we send, need to send any notifications about. Um, most of our stuff, if we have to send it, has to be sent certified, <coughs> $7 a whack. Um, public hearings, again, that's based on ads for public hearings, assuming one a month in the summertime, usually like, for example, if it's a year when we do regulations, um, we have to do that twice, um, and that ad, because it has to be big, because we're required to list what the changes were in the ad, um, those ads often are expensive. Um, and then if Eversource puts in for tree trimming on Hobbs Road, because it's a scenic road, we have to advertise a public hearing for that. Um, and the way the scenic road ordinance is written, we cannot pass those costs on to Eversource. So we have to eat that, and they usually do that once every two years, they come around looking to do tree trimming, and last they didn't do it this year. So my assumption is we will hear from them at some point. Well, they next came year. around last year, but they didn't do very much. Right, trimming. they did the trimming last year, but they actually applied for permission for Hobbs Road the previous year. They, so if they stick to that same schedule, they didn't they cut have, most of the trees. Though they're still there. Well, whether they cut them or not I, is not my purview. No, whether you don't follow have, up on whether that. Whether they have approval to cut them is where we come in. Um, travel is, a, is based on something in the range of 50 to $75 per board member to go to some sort of conference. Um, and then workshops and seminars, again, is based on about $75 per person to go to a conference, assuming each board member goes, which particularly if we have new people, the potential for, you know, they just, there wasn't really a lot in the way of applicable stuff for the Historic District Commission this year. Um, we had one year where the law, the law series that NHMA does, everything they were offering that year was applicable to us, and so we had three of us at every single one of them, or two of us at every single one of them, so our workshops that year were higher. Obviously, if we can carpool, we carpool. 
um, to cut down on mileage and things like that. But, uh, and the other thing, unfortunately for us, none of the conferences or workshops are ever close. Yeah. You know, like budget committee, they always have one in Conway. You know, we never do. They are Manchester, Concord, Littleton was where the statewide preservation conference was this year. They're always far away, which means we rack up the mileage. So. All right, well, uh, I don't have a problem with this. Anybody? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept as presented. I'll second that. Any more discussion? No. no. Okay. And did you get the note that technically this, because we did not have quorum in our meeting last night, which is when we were supposed to vote on this, okay, that I don't think anyone will have any issue, <laughs> but in the event that a board member says, well, wait a minute, I think we should change this to we manage to convince two other people. <laughs> but I doubt it very highly. We, your, your, your members can come in and probably petition Mr. Strauss and his commission group. committee. Because I think we're good with this. Yep. I find it highly unlikely that it will go up. All right. Yeah. All in favor. Bye. Aye. Eric, thank you so much for everything. Huh? You did a great job. Have a lovely evening. I'm going to go sit in back now. Okay. Take notes. Have a lolly. <laughs> All right. Where's up next? Mm -hmm. Want me to run out back, see if Dr. Boyden's available? Um, I don't know, but I think Grace is Crystal's fine. Crystal's driving here, so. Yeah. We can wait. I actually put Rebecca towards the end because she holds hours now. So I was going to get her when her hours. Oh, somebody just walked out there, too. Yeah. We can wait for Crystal. Okay. Do you have any additional handouts we might look at? You're getting to my punchline. I'm not so sure. You certainly could. Thank you. Information that I provided as requested. So there we go. What qualifies as a patron? Because there's a whole lot more patrons yeah. than the people in our town. Some people go to the library more than once a year. Really? <laughs> so actually, that's the number of people who, who are there, who visit. Yeah. Number of visits. Yeah. Hmm. So yes, that would be more correct. I'll correct that for the Budget Committee presentation. Thank you. This is a trial <laughs> run. Let me know if there's anything else I should change. Well, you know. <laughs> I don't, want to, I, don't want to, I don't want to confuse the budget committee. <laughs> doesn't say anything of absolving me of overdue book charges here. So. We don't charge for overdue book. Oh, nice. I was going to tell him how much you owe. Oh, <laughs> much? Except for you, Mike. You owe. <sighs> Thank you. 
Oh, mine is kind of written off. What's that, Dave? I need, yeah, I, I want to have a copy for my book. You're, you're going to initial it the way you approve, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll I did pass it. these on to you when you can initial them. Yeah. These are the ones already done. Ten five. Mm -hmm. Since we're just kind of at a low here, I'm going to throw some things sure. out. Um, office equipment and supplies have gone down $370. Yes. Why don't we wait for Crystal? No. Because a lot of this is, is in the area that she actually manages. Sure. So I'm okay. sorry. Well, well, it's fine. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're not Crystal. I'll be really You think? Oh, yeah, right. That's always it's the way. It's just a presentation. You can do what you will with it. <laughs> I came in with the ZBA budget one year, and I worked up every possible to the pen this way, that way. And they said, what do you got? Oh, okay. You're done. <laughs> oh, well. So why did we go down the She's not crystal. She's not crystal. That's right. He's right. But I am here. Yes, you're not crystal. And you have two budgets to present, though. Two little teeny mini ones. You'll get them next year. Do you want to um, go with Teresa? I think hers do look like they might go quick, John. I, I don't care. That doesn't matter. Are you ready now? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a yes. <laughs> yeah, the boots. Any questions? Uh, the, I'll state the obvious. It looks like both of these budgets are going down, so why don't we start with the first page planning board and um, just tell us if there's anything. So the one item that went up under planning board is the books and publications. Um, and the reason is because when I was discussing the budget with the zoning board, it was, I was reminded that I was thinking that item was mostly for our yearly um, land use books with the regulations, but they're also um, for law updates and that sort of thing. So, um, given that some people can't attend trainings, having the annual, a written copy of the annual law updates is a very helpful thing for these mm -hmm. folks. Hard work and volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, I think everything else on that stayed the same, except a little reduction in the secretary wages. Um, computer services went down because we don't have a need that we see. Uh, and that was left at a dollar. Office equipment was asked to be removed, so we removed it. They didn't leave a dollar there. I don't know if there should be a dollar. Leave it. Leave a dollar? Okay, so I did not put a dollar there, but we could do that.
And salaries going down. What? Yeah, um, I did. Um, I attached a page that actually yeah. went through the calculation, and I tried to have it. Um, because we don't have a lot of good numbers from this past year, um, it still remains maybe to be seen exactly what it will run, but um, good calculations from the ZBA from last year, I tried to mirror that, I tried to keep that, I think it's the same, yeah, same from last year for ZBA, mm -hmm. se secretary, and I tried to make the calculation for the secretary for the planning board the same way. So the same time for meetings, time mm -hmm. for minutes, um, mm -hmm. and I think we just added a few more hours for filing for the planning board. So that's what that extra page explains. So I guess that leads me to my question. I, I mean, are you going to, or is uh, Nate going to tackle the file cabinets back there at some point? Is no, that I will. Your... Yeah, a few hours a month. Oh, okay. So that's in there. Is that in there? Yeah, that's in there. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem. I mean, if people started attending workshops and everything else, I think you're going to probably have to bump that up. But since nobody's really taking advantage of it for the most now, probably safe. Yeah, and, and uh, for both planning and, I know you're still planning. I can try to at least keep that the same as it was to encourage participation. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? I'm good. No, I'm yeah. good. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, planning board budget, and we did put a, a dollar into surprise. Is that what we? Well, if we're going to do that, should we put it in uh, zoning as well? I would. I would say so if we're doing. Yeah. That. If we're going to do it. But that. That's my um, for the planning board I'm making yeah. a motion to accept. Um, the budget is uh, $5,962. dollars Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, we didn't make a motion yet for the zoning. We're going to kill you on the zoning one. Right? <laughs> so, got your hopes up really good, didn't you? <laughs> I tried to slide that one through, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with the zoning either. Nope. We'll just add that dollar onto the office equipment. Yep. And professional services is a dollar? Yeah, that was put in years ago in case they needed to uh, expand that line at any point in time to spend to have professional representation. One of the things that the ZBA board can't take it upon themselves to uh, counter an expert witness. Say. An expert witness that comes in, you don't have a, a, your own. You can't overrule the witness's testimony. Yeah. So that line has always been in there for that or for legal fees in case, you know, we couldn't. Uh, the Board of Selectmen is always a, um, has standing in any ZBA case. So we could have our own attorney in front of the board, and they may need legal advice where, again, they have to go outside. So that, that's just a placeholder. They yeah, could have if, real if money put were, to it. But. Yeah, yeah, things were different. I might be asking for money for that line Absolutely. to keep it mm. in there, but um, with an eye toward trying to trim where we could trim. Uh -huh. It's greatly appreciated. We're taking a, a guess that that might work. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, zoning board budget at $2,068. Second. Nope. Any more discussion? No. Nope. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank you again, gentlemen. Be here, <laughs> safe time. Appreciate it. Here. Thank you, library thank trustees. You thank you for greasing the skin there. And yes. everyone, to <laughs> all of us. Uh, we've, been, we've been nice to everybody. we gotta, we got to step this up. of some of the statistics that we have. So I wanted to go over that. And 
Mike, you started out with a question about, was it office equipment and supplies? I can't remember. Yes. Okay. Because it's down $370. Yep. Which is, and I'm going to rely on Crystal for help with this. I think yeah, a lot of that had to do with um, what's been going on more electronically now and less use of some of the hard yeah. copy stuff. Um, a big help was the new printer as of last year, which uh, is toner versus ink, which was a big help. Um, and we just try to look year to year, you know, some things we purchase, um, try to purchase bulk, but that means also trying to use it year to year, so it may not, one year we may use more and have some left over, the other year we may not. Um, so that's really all I can say that we're just trying to be conservative. That. So, yep. um, contracted services? What? Were... Well, contracted services is interesting. We did have that um, this year. We used a considerable amount of that this year for bookkeeping services because, you know, we had a turnover with the treasurer and so forth, but now we have a very able body in place, um, so we no longer need the bookkeeper, and um, <laughs> I see dubious glances there, but... Um, that's where we've used it in the past, was for that, for contracted mm -hmm. services. I think, and I'm going to look to you also, guys to help, is that also for the cleaning? No, nope, nope, that's, that's town. It's oh, also sorry. our, um, we had uh, a tech person that I needed initially some help <laughs> when we uh, had a new website launch, um, but that sort of tapered off, and Teresa is nice to us. She does the town site and our site. And Pat is also very techy, so she has offered to lend a helping hand. Um, yeah. So I think the thing I'd really like to draw your attention to are what I have provided. Um, do you have any hope? <laughs> no. on the uh, bar charts just so that you could see what we had going on. One of the things that you might be aware of is uh, Crystal provides a really nice report, and I actually brought copies with me, um, every year in the town report that gives a breakdown of everything that we have going on in the library between the patrons that are visiting, the books that are checked out, um, interlibrary loan, all sorts of things that are going on, and we've had really upward progress. So, to actually... Mike had a very good point. Is this annual patron count, or is this people who are coming into the library on a regular basis? But you can see we had a 25% increase this year, um, and with the borrowing, we're up 13.6%. Um, and I have to say, I think a lot of that, on both cases, is due to the staff that we have at the library, who are both besides being very engaging, are very helpful in recommending books, getting people involved, uh, setting up programs and so forth, and I think that's really shown a lot with what we've had for both the patrons coming in and the increase in the borrowing. Um, it's really... So does the borrow also positive. include people that want that basically use the internet to borrow books? I did include that in there because you actually do count that. You yeah. get a good count of the, the downloads. Lap, the laptops are checked in and out, the e-books electronic books. Yeah, so anybody that's a member of the library can mm -hmm. literally go in and rent a book online. They don't even need to come in. They don't even need to come in. So just for the camera and the people, mm -hmm. explain the borrow. What is the borrowing? The borrow would be, so... Any any item borrowed right. from the library. Yep. Okay. So be it computer children. usage. Yep. Okay. Any book, any DVD, any audio book, the telescope, any laptops checked out. Okay. Let's go. I didn't count that. Ah, oh, it's in there. So now, how, how is, what's the access that you don't even have to come in? Uh, that you provide the ebook. Uh, yeah. So okay, so you have ebooks. Yeah, that's part of a consortium through the state library that we have to pay an annual fee for. So with your library card, you can check out three, either ebooks or um, audiobooks. And that's just yeah. going on to your website. Yep, there's information on the website. Three at a time. Three at a time with your card. Okay. So rather than spending money at 25 plus dollars for a book or an audio book, you can download them for free. Amazing. 
Yes. So last year there was a request for more funding for programs that seems to be decreasing this year. Is that uh, due to the turnover? Or, um, well, the there's a couple really of things. Kind of driving that? Well, there's a few things going on with that, and we really try. You know, we're really trying to keep this budget very tight, as you had requested. We're seeking a lot more grants this year. <coughs> We've been a little, um, I'd say, haphazard with that in the past. Um, but we've been, um, between all the conferences that we attend and the publications, um, you know, that people pick up the information on the library one, plus also other ones that we have, uh, there's a number of grants that we're seeking for both programs and books. So we're hoping that that will help to offset that. There's nothing there yet. There's no guarantees, as you know. But that's one of the areas where there are opportunities for grants. So we're optimistic. Just to touch on something you alluded to there, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't that I was really looking for you to have a, a tight budget or a smaller budget. What I was looking for last year is what I see in front of me this year is your line items are very concise as to where the money's going. And when I look across and I say like uh, workshops and seminars, um, you're budgeting more money for that. so. It, point taken. You've got a whole bunch of folks now that are very active there, that are pursuing things. And what I see that's missing is, and maybe it's rolled into that all as one, but it's typically shown as mileage. Do you not compensate your folks? Oh yeah, we do not mileage? compensate for mileage. Yep. And there's no line for, for that? Or? No, we just, we haven't broken up, like we don't break down paper versus ink versus whatever, so that's it's rolled just, up into that. It's right in the workshop and seminar. That's okay, because right. that, that typically is, um, there's a set price for mileage reimbursement, mm -hmm. so that's more of a standalone item to me, I'm not saying you need to put it in there. Ink and paper, I'm not going to have the same kind of view, but... Um, Fortunately, uh, I can say that a handful of the workshops we go to are really conservative, because they know we're small libraries that are fighting for a budget, and so, you know, the, the one that recently was attended by both Grace and Susan was $15. Yeah. It was a decent track over to Vermont, but... Well, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> you said maybe not cost a lot to attend these right. things and try to find grants and all the things that that encompasses. Mm -hmm. But then there's, you know... But within reason. I don't, I don't yeah. ever go to the big fancy ones because... If I may mind, <laughs> just to give you... Those categories that you see are our top level categories when we set up all the accounting, but for example, under books and publications, within the library's financial software, we break out books, DVDs, audiobooks, periodicals, music CDs, all of those are accounted for separately. They all fall under that overarching books and publications Absolutely. line. Workshops and seminars is the top category. Underneath that, we might break out you know, workshops, we might break out mileage, we might break out parking, we might break out tolls, all of that sort of thing in those subcategories. If we gave you every pay, every subcategory broken out in our budget, you would have a three-page budget. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that wasn't my focus, and right. I certainly understand right. how that works. It was just that the mileage is an item that tends to run pretty good because it's 50-something cents a mile, and I forget one of them are, but you don't have to put it in here. I was just touching on it. Because it's, it's just not there and most of the budgets have it. Um, my last thing for me is I see you asking for a 3% raise for the staff. And I'm not sure that the town's going to be giving out 3% raises this year. Um, so that one falls into the, uh, the budget committee's lap uh, to handle. But short of that, I'm, I'm all good unless the others have questions. The association dues, is that state association? So 1600 um, down to 1500 for next year? So that, um... I'm just curious. I've never seen associations go down and do That's why I'm mm -hmm. just curious. We were no. concerned because of the um, state library. Their uh, interlibrary loan server went down in December of 2017. No. And it was really up in the air, literally up until about two months ago. Um, so I didn't have much to go by as to if our rates were going to increase. Okay. That's also the downloadable books I spoke to okay. earlier and a couple other small little associations we are part of. So we were fortunate that we 
you didn't see a, a hike that we were expecting, so we thought we could maybe tap that down a, a titch. Okay. And yeah, I see the technology is going up, but that looks like in your explanation sheet because that's also a software increase for the uh, right. That's the regular yeah. and library that's, software. That's for the circulation okay. uh, that's, that's software. The one. Yeah, that's <laughs> the one that keeps us on track of who has which books. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? No, I'm good. John, you got anything? John? I'm kind of good, but um, what, uh, I just want to let them know. What What do you think this budget committee, well, what about the raises? Budget committee voted to accept the same as last year. Which was to? Which was um, to allow the select board to a point raises based on a percentage based on the overall town salary, same as what we did last year. And the committee, uh, majority of the committee voted to agree to no more than up to, excuse me, 3%. Up to, but we expected the board would be voting what they wanted for a raise and applying that to each and every budget as it goes along. To be presented to us, same as last year. And so, what I'll just remind people is the, and I appreciate the input, you know, on, on what we can have for um, different line items and so forth. You know, the library budget, as you know, is just bottom line, and then it may be appropriated or reappropriated as the Board of Trustees sees fit on what line items there are. So, our recommendation is we're going would like to see a three percent raise for the salaries um, for this year but it is a bottom line budget well knowing that we don't have a lot of influence over the library's budget here um, that's just an area I'm not willing to get involved with so I'm all set and unless you want to pursue that one for no. the job. Job. I'm good what the and decide. so I'm going to just make sure I have everything too. Just any feedback, anything that we need to provide more for the budget committee for the next meeting? Any additional information that you need from us? Cool. Do I need to change the heading on that? Steve? Yeah. Okay, I'll change that. <laughs> Good. Uh, anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I was throwing this your way. Yeah, I know you are. Make a motion to, to accept the library budget worksheet. As presented? As presented, 62448. Second. I'm just not too set with saying with, without knowing the raises. We're not, so we're not going to go with the 2% or we're just going to go 3 well, I the think li the library does not have to follow. I, I understand. I, I, I understand. I we, get it. But we can we can restrict their bottom line. Yeah. To anything we want. So our increase that we're asking for is one point six five percent over last year, overall our bottom line. So we're basically at one and a half percent over last year's budget, including that. Well, I think what we'll be doing uh, again this year is looking at the salary. This, leastwise, I've looked at this, and we haven't discussed it, but yeah. looking at that that pool we draw from on a percentage basis, and <clears throat> essentially mirroring what we did last year at approximately three percent. But again, that's not going to be most likely given across the board because we have different. Yeah, everybody knows the pay scales are not exactly set yet. So some will be weighted to some positions and less to some others. Um, so that's kind of a, a moving target on an individual basis. It's not a hard and fast 3% across the board for me personally at this point. Um, but it's in the realm of what we would be mm -hmm. asking for. Again, last year we had some debate on this, and, and uh, I think ultimately the it doesn't seem like this is something I want to try and micromanage for no, me I, here. I, but, you know, I, I would note your concerns. I, 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 well, make a mo motion is there. All in favor? I did. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.
Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ladies. I apologize for getting to <laughs> yeah, next year we're going to want you to stay overnight so you can make this on time. I heard 6.30 and then I heard this starting 10 minutes early. So how did you eat? Well, I think it went quicker, so, you know. You guys are good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I heard you got your materials delivered. Thank you. Not a problem. We're all happy. Lower of gravel for the Iron River Jerry Preserve. Just in the parking lot, four yards. Mike suggested, because, well, we, we talked about this, you know, there was anything left from road construction in gravel. We'd be very willing to take that. Well, it didn't happen, so it happened this year. And uh, they they did uh, Evans Brothers only had maybe a two two yards, but they put it down. Then they came back with two more yards to finish off the four yard mm -hmm. area. And I, I understand they spread it out. And exactly. It. Yes. Okay. They spread it. And to Jack uh, Williams. Uh, Vice Chair of Conservation's satisfaction because he did the math. <laughs> yes, he did. I checked his math and he did the math. Uh, well, that's good. I'm glad that finally got done because that was a holdover from, from last year. Yes. Hey. We're making progress. <laughs> well, um, it looks like you're up. Okay. So, um, outside of just skimming through here, I... I really didn't uh, have a moment yet to go at it, but I noticed that uh, you took from the land improvements uh, 800 out of $1,000, and could you touch on that? Then? Sure. Well, realizing the fact that we asked last year for 1000 and even with the gravel delivery, which uh, the town will pay for, but ECC will pay the town back for that. Uh, that's only the most 200. Okay. Uh, you know, with the wet spring, uh, we couldn't do much uh, down there at uh, Pine River. And so, okay, we're, we've got the $1,000 from last year. Well, we have plans for that, and including an interpretive trail sign system, you know, to walk people through mm. and to tell you something about it. And, we're working with UNH uh, on that. But that won't happen until next year. So, okay, that's why uh, land improvement went from 1,000 to 200. Okay, yeah, and I guess it's worth noting, because folks will probably get confused by this, but the Conservation Commission, unlike other boards, gets to retain their budget right. money. For everybody else, we, we turn it all back over. In, in By state state. law, yeah. Fine, yeah. So you, you do have your assets that you didn't uh, spend, so you can still spend those this coming year. Correct. Um, and then I think this was pretty widely publicized, and I hope or widely supported, was that the um, Province Lake Lake Host Program, uh, which monitors for uh, several types of invasive invasive species, which um, milfoil is the big one around here, but there certainly are several others. Uh, that's your big increase uh, as a request from the Province Lake Association. Uh, it's an additional $1,000. Um, Which the PLA uh, gave the BOS uh, presentation last month, correct? Yes. yes. Yep. yep. Good one. Mm -hmm. Yep, we've had a, a couple of presentations. Green Mountain was in and uh, covering a lot of our water quality issues. So, um, unless anybody here on the board has has well, anything for Emily, I'm certainly yeah. Uh, good, but I have a good question, one. if I may. You sure. do. Uh, I think you've had everybody take office supplies, and you're going to supply them out of executive if they're a commission. There's a hundred dollars in here for office supplies that I think they can save. Oh, all right. Good, good catch there, Brian. Um, how do you handle your office supplies? Are you purchasing well, using off That's site? a sad thing. <laughs> we, the members of ECC, provide our own paper and ink for the most part. 
uh, I recently asked the town, because we updated our bylaws, to print out six copies of a 14-page document, which the town has always accommodated us on official documents as a bylaw, you know, update on a bylaw. But other things, oh no. <laughs> Basically, I pay for them, I just don't put the bills in. Oh. My contribution. Well, we shouldn't. One thing you should do, do that. Yeah. Well, I because know, the I next know. Emily, the next Emily will have a shortfall. And this office supply line will go up a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you you still feel you're you're doing things off site that you need the that that the number is relevant. It is. It okay. is. Okay. It's you know. I mean, maybe next time I have to buy a print. <laughs> I should you know put that in as office supplies. Yep. Because that's basically what my printer goes for. <laughs> okay, because that would be something, uh, like Brian pointed out, you could, um, depending on how your processes work, you could look at that maybe for next year then if that works out. But if you're good with what you've got going on, I don't have a problem with, with no. that. Well, I think it's problem. like mileage. Even if we do go to a free workshop, none of us ever charge for mileage, you know. Yes, that's what uh, workshops is for, $100, but none of us have been to any. Actually, I keep that line open uh, for new members. Right, yep. Wishful thinking, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. if I get a, a, if we, ECC gets a new member, yes, you know, well, the first one being uh, New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions. They have a great one, you know, come up. Next month. Well, I'll make a motion to accept this. Yep. The budget uh, as presented. Second. Any discussion? Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, just one more thing, guys. Uh, you can't. We already motioned it. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> when you're ahead, you gotta keep. You see, you're approved, Emily. This. This might change the whole outlook now. <laughs> no, no. I just want to ask you. I sent Chris uh, a milfoil report oh. for this year. Did that get in their folders? I, didn't see. I, didn't I imagine it did. did. Yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't notice it. I didn't see it. Oh. Doesn't mean. But Doesn't you, mean you saw it, right? It, it, I will look for it, I, and I apologize. Oh. If it well, hasn't been in that folder, it should be. Anyhow, it's just a very short report. I can paraphrase what it said. Uh, last week, uh, in Ospie Lake, unfortunately, they found 60 gallons of milfoil in Marist Cove, which is an area we've been cleaning up since 2015 or 2016. And... Uh, and 40 gallons in the river. Not too bad, because we did survey from the Freedom 153 bridge down to Hunter's Bridge, the whole Effingham side. And we've never done that in one year. We basically broke it up into, you know, the Freedom 25 bridge and 25 to Hunter's Bridge. Uh, but the, the, the Worst part, which I know does not affect Effingham, but the same uh, owner of uh, New England Milfoil, which cleans up our milfoil, also did down in uh, just above the dam in Keyser Falls oh. on 25, 120 gallons. Wow. Well, good thing is I went to a, a Berry Bay meeting uh, last Saturday, and Amy Smagula, who was basically the, our DA, DS, uh, Milfoil person, she runs the whole program, I was there as a speaker, and I met her before, of course, and uh, she said, she gave her her report on Ospie Lake, she said, oh, Maris Co. has been clean for a couple of years, because yes, the state did chemically treat it uh, back in 2016, but uh, that doesn't, that, that, that was then, this is now. And I had to contradict her because I had updated information and said, no, you know, this week, Effingham and New England Milfoil took out about 60 gallons out of the lake. Hmm. 
Now, earlier in the year, a month or two ago, um, you had mentioned that they did find milfoil up by um, the campground. Um, yes. Westwood Shores. Westwood Shores. And that the um, consensus at that point was they did not need any additional funding by the towns that were... No, the state. The state took care. The state took care. Yeah. Okay. Maybe in for divers. Okay. Yeah. Is the state, the state obviously has been informed of this new development? So? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because even when New England milfoil, any doc certified New Hampshire diver for milfoil has to report to Amy. Okay. okay. She just hasn't gotten the update on this week. Gotcha. You know? Okay. Uh, nor has the town gotten the invoice, but it'll come <laughs> for New England milfoil. And that will be... Two oh. days. That'll be coming out of the uh, Invasive Species Trust Fund. Correct. So we'll be now looking for that increase or that replenishment to... I would, I would strongly suggest that, yes. Okay. Well, that was relevant information. Well, that's why I brought it up. Cause, and that's why, I don't know what happened, but if I'll you can't find, find it, it, I'll send it again. <laughs> so we're going to so we'll cut week. your budget $1,000 then. <laughs> for bringing up that information. <laughs> It'll be more like a twenty-five hundred. His mother didn't hug him enough. <laughs> she told him to go out and play. Yeah. Well, he lived on the side of a freeway. Said. He lived on the side of a freeway. The four ninety-five. <laughs> Little. Um, all right. Well, you're all set. Thank you, Emily. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the work you guys do and yeah. for helping us uh, expedite our culvert permitting for the Green Mountain Road project. Uh, uh, you know, when uh, White Mountain Survey comes in and explains it, <laughs> uh, that was very helpful. Yeah. Well, we sent the owner himself. So. You, you did. <laughs> Good. Good night. Thank Good night. You. Thank you. And uh, Becca's uh, hours are usually till 6 o'clock, I believe, so yeah. she must have somebody out there with her. Do you want me to go check? Oh, I just heard something. I thought it was 6 on the website last time I looked. But... I'll go check. Would you? Yes, I will. Well, thank you. How are we hitting them there, Dave? Red flags shooting all over the room? Yeah, I was hoping the race thing was settled already. I didn't know you hadn't voted to agree what you wanted. Um, no, we hadn't set down on that, but um, on our next work session, I'm sure we'll cover that. Yeah, Again, sure. that was one of those things last year where with that particular department is kind of a difficult. Yeah, we had it settled before that. We started in here last year. We just didn't get it this year. You have two departments next week that are going to have salaries on them, so yeah, okay. we may have to push those finals out for the Thursday to the work session. Um, so I don't know, maybe. I mean, you can still see them on Tuesday, but do the final numbers on the Thursday. Yeah, we'll be getting those, so you're right, exactly. We'll let you know already. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I we think, haven't had a chance to discuss it. Yeah, we, we just, there's been just a lot of other things taking up time and we haven't uh, yeah, coordinated. So. Hey, did you ever get in touch with Frank? Uh, no, I did call, um, sorry, uh, 
a different direction here. Oh, yeah. I did call all state materials because I figured if you weren't getting anywhere with Frank, you've known him a long time, it was unlikely that I was going to have any better luck. So um, the thought process was that when they purchased, they might have purchased the liability and such. So I called the corporate office and was told that um, they just bought the assets and such. They didn't buy any of the liabilities and whatever Frank did was, was um, on him. So uh, going forward, they be in a different position, but they're not warranting anything Frank did uh, as far as from last year. So um, I did reach out to somebody who works in the field and got some input. And one of the things I was told to do was don't even bother trying to crack seal the center line because when you go over it with the new material, um, that, that, that's not good to have in anyway. The, uh, so uh, unless we wanted to try and bring somebody in to assess the road and from there if it was it professionally found to be issues then we would have to pursue it on our own dime. I don't know if that's even where I would go. Hello. Hi there. Hi there. So we were get, you were getting a scoop on your injury? Not yet. Oh. Nobody knows? Uh, no. I mean, um, obviously did something to it at some point, not knowing when or how. X-ray didn't show any bone damage. So they couldn't fit me into an orthopedic appointment until tomorrow morning. So been icing it, warm baths, heating pad. Glass of whiskey. I I can I can compare X-rays and stuff and surgery stories with you. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. So here we have your budget. Yeah. Now. And um, one of the things that uh, I was noticing here was there's an increase in telephone. Um. Yeah. Well, I took the I took the um. Two thirds telephone bill that was provided for me through uh, September first, and then divided in half and added, you know did the math for projected and it came out higher. Hmm. So I said okay. Now I will point out that that's the only phone that's out there. I have no idea what the welfare officer uses the phone for, but there's no. Separation. She sure. doesn't have a separate phone number. Right. So, um, I mean, I'm assuming that most long distance calls would be me, since the welfare officer wouldn't really have much reason except for maybe local long distance for state information or something. Um, whereas I do often call people out of state on something to do with their um, with their property. But that's unlimited. I was going to say we don't have an unlimited plan out there. That's well, not for out of state. Really. I don't think so. I think so. I think so. Well, then I don't know why it's high, because I never see the bills. I just, well, I, I see Someone's the, got the consolidated bill in the Yeah, they're all identical, so. They're 85 bucks. Right. Well, what I get charged is 41 44 84, I'm going to have to say it's 84 something. 85 something. 85, 85 38 or something. Yeah. So, um, so what do we do? Split it in half? How do we how do we determine who's paying what if we have one line? I I don't know. I guess it's being split between me and welfare. We'll follow up on that. We'll have to take it under advisement. Yeah. So. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I've yeah, been no, yeah. here. Not, been not here to put you on the since, spot. I was just. July, I was a question. I was going to ask you. And I've never okay. seen a phone okay. bill, so okay. I have no right. idea what cool. the plan is. I All have right. no, no idea. No worries. We'll. I just, we'll, as I said, we'll, I, check it out. we'll I, get that I, on I did the, I did the, I did the math. Um, and I specifically asked, and I've done that in the past with yeah. Claudia. Tried to get all my receipts and everything in by the end of August, and then done a. Uh, two thirds in order to yeah. right. print it out while it was there. Yeah, in order to in order to project the full for the mm -hmm. year as best I can. So Rebecca, then on uh, supplies, um, you do have needs for supplies back there that are separate from 
operating directly out of that office. Right? Yeah, it's, it's not it's not high. Um, you know, I mean, I get my ream paper for the copier here, and I'm not sure how that's tracked. I, I used to get charged it, but I don't know whether that office gets charged anymore. It's not tracked. No. Okay, because everyone uses it's it. Right, yeah, we're, we're getting away from the, you know, nickel and dime. I mean, that is used by so many different so people, but if I my, put an inch of paper in it, it's but, gone. But you need, you need to have supplies for I your get, printer and this yeah, other thing. Yeah, I mean, basically, I get paper for, for permits and... Um, So you go through the office? No, you no I, I have traditionally gone to, oh, staples. to staples um, because I I have a Staples account, so I use my Staples rewards sometimes for stuff and get it for nothing. I, I recognize that you would have needs for office supplies, be it a staple or pens, whatever. Yeah, markers. I mean, it's not it's not huge. Um, okay. Post-its. Well, that was, that was my... Would this my, be one that we would include? Yeah, that's what I mean. We would include this well, I mean, I, Everything that she's talking about, it should be part of... Yeah, yeah I'm happy to do it to that. I mean, the only, the only special stuff I ever do that's not part of general office supplies is like when I get a new backup. Well, even that's general office supply, but backup drive for my computer because it's, it's a Mac. Oh, the cartridges. Um, ink of cartridges for that little printer out there. But, but the, yeah, they, they with, could all with be the office system here. that they've got here. Which um, it's really out. actually the only cost that are specialty to me in some ways are the printing ones sometimes. I mean, I get um, um, I get the, the that size map. I get spiral bound after we get a new version of it. And I do that at Staples because it's the cheapest way. Um, and then I carry it in the car without the pages going. All over the place. All right. It's one of the few. Okay, so I guess we we're looking at we could put your supplies onto the town and sure. you buy what you need. And yeah, I mean, you know, except when I happen to be up there on some other errand, I often, you know, well, we've got, to tell. We've got a new, new pricing system. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to go with whatever you you folks say is the is the most economical way of doing it, and. Uh, and assume that everyone would be okay if there was an emergency and I had yeah, you know, yeah. staples you, and we, bought new magic markers. But you, you have you have needs for office supplies out there and I just want to make sure you're getting them. Yeah. Uh, especially if we're doing everything through this office it gets built there. I just want you to be able to get the things you, you need because yeah. you have unique needs right. versus the other Yeah, she would get them all. Yeah. Just put your request in and Brian will get it for you. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to do it that so way. We'll and cut that right out. Put it down to a buck like we did. Yeah. Before. Keep it, yeah. All right, yeah, I'm leaving it at a dollar so she has some options available to you. So we're taking that off. Down to a buck. A buck. Um, so everybody's aware, I am trying to see if we can change telephone systems to voice over IP. Um, I'm having some. Consternation gaze spectrum. Same kind of luck you and I had, Mike. But well, we are going to keep landlines, though, right? Because we do, I think we need to have land well, landlines. Landlines yeah. will then become over IP, not consolidated. We will get away from consolidated phone and do spectrum systems if that works. But I just want to let you know we're researching that. We're nowhere near ready to do it. But I think it might be ultimately a cost savings. Is there is there an EMS requirement to have a hard landline wired to a telephone company? I think that's what the one in the kitchen was always about. Yeah, that nine one one is that one right in the kitchen. It's dedicated, and, and as as the uh, uh, management operator. Uh, yeah, the, no, operation. the uh, alarm system is dedicated. Well, you also need to have phones that will work if the power goes off. What's that? You exactly. need to have phones that work if the power goes off. Exactly. I yeah. mean, I've got an old desk phone out there, and I've got a I've got a portable, yeah, but it needs but it needs electricity you know, to work, which is what I use. That's right here. Voice over internet, battery backup, and we got a generator in this building because of the EMS system, so we'll always have power. Is it generate that building? Deanna has to have a dedicated line. It can still be, it still can be voice over IP. Yeah. But yeah. The, the thing is, is you can't go completely to it because there's no way of getting a line into the transfer station unless you pay big bucks for the line. So we're going to still have some consolidated phone, but um, 
we need to look at the cost because I think the cost can come down considerably from consolidated. Okay, that's not the yeah. We'll look that's into not the we'll, conversation. We'll have this here. Um, okay, so um, I noticed also you were dropping uh, your wages by a, a fair amount here, and I get the. Uh, I did see the back page that you laid out uh, what you were planning to do in decreasing hours in the uh, off season. I'll say. Yeah, it seemed like it. It seemed like it would be a good way to look at um, cutting back a little bit the the activity in the office in late January through early March is is pretty minimal. Once we get past the hearings for the zoning ordinance. Um, then it's quiet until sort of right before town meeting. Um, and I think that, uh, that there's no need for me certainly to be in the office twice a week. Um, and uh, traditionally I've actually taken one, one of those weeks off, the way I've taken a week off in the summer. It's been one of the, the two weeks. I mean, I've always budgeted for a 50-week year. Um, that's what you've always hired me for. Um, and this time I was thinking that maybe as well as that, just drop, um, drop two or three weeks in that slow season down to minimal. Minimal. I would do all the email. Um, we could. Or by appointment only. Or by appointment only or whatever was necessary in order to, in the worst driving of the year, eliminate coming over here for an hour and a half office session when nobody's in the office? Yeah, I, I personally don't have a problem with yeah. you uh, uh, fixing your schedule a little bit to the ebb and flows of right. the business. Um, I'm, I'm more looking at the, um, the activity that is so easy to follow now because of your, your monthly report now has gotten that whole concise yep. back page thing. When, yep. um, are, you, are you sure that some of those hours couldn't be added to the summer season, or how's that working out for you? I just want to I make sure you're not cutting yourself I think we're short. okay doing it, because I've, I've, I've been tracking the hours pretty closely this year, and I just did a similar kind of thing with my hours that I did with the, with the finances, um, and I actually haven't been putting in for the total hours that I budgeted for last year, for this year, um, on the assumption that the reason we budgeted that number of hours was if something came up, legal work, whatever, I'd have a little cushion of hours there for whatever was needed. And so I've got a cushion of hours there, and it doesn't look like I'm going to need them all. So that's why I was thinking, well, we can probably pull back a little bit. I mean, it's good to have a cushion of 10 or 15 hours, you know, against the year you're looking at. I'm not sure you need a cushion of 25 to 30 hours. I mean, maybe, but I don't think so. And it just it didn't seem okay. it didn't seem warranted. Fine. Now I know that my budget, like most everyone other department, if it's not spent, it goes back to the town. Right. So it's not like we're losing that money. I mean, you know, Brian will get to you know buy new phone systems with it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but but still, I mean, you know, I I designed budgets for years and years and years for a theater company I ran, and I believe. In, you know, trying to be. No, I I, I appreciate it. I I just wanted to make sure you didn't see that you could have you know a need somewhere else. I mean, you spend time with the planning board when they get into working on ordinances. Should mm -hmm. they start attacking ordinances with a little more vigor? That's more hours. Yeah. Um, you're going to a, uh, a court thing. Well, yeah. uh, it's a mediation thing. So you'll be representing the town at that. You can occasionally get be brought into court situations or things. So I think we're okay. All right. As long as you I just wanted I to throw it out there that you're comfortable with yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I think we're okay. I, I think the number of hours I pulled out there is not is not gonna hurt us. I think I think that when we added the hours last year, we were you know, concerned about added enforcement, uh, the legal the legal time cushion, all of that and I'm just thinking that okay, I'm thinking probably pull back a little bit from what we added. Um, and and I did the numbers to just show you what I had in mind, but that slow time. I did have an idea, we don't need to discuss it now, but there are towns that do certain amount of moratoriums on some kinds of permits. Um, and I was going to suggest that, um, and we'd have to ask the attorney what the process would be, 
that we put a moratorium on campground permits during the winter months because the campgrounds are closed and you can't visit the sites anyway without snowshoes. So why don't we just say that, you know, between December 1st and April 1st, something like that, March 1st, whatever it would be, um, you know, the town doesn't issue permits for campground, campground stu you, structures. You have many coming in at that time frame? Well, no, but two just came in today. And I'm going, but the campgrounds are already closed. Okay. So I, I wouldn't push it because people want to come back and get the campground ready and be nice in the spring. But you could, you could reach a point where you could say from a certain date to a certain date, you're not issuing campground permits. There are some towns that don't issue any building permits in the winter, that they, that they don't issue building permits in January or February, something like that. Well, what about access right now, since you said the campground is closed? How would you get in here to verify if you need Oh, to I mean closed, supposedly, but the, the, they're not operating. Right. Every, everything's wrapped up. But you can get in there and look at, I mean, I can drive in. They have a, right, they're still like yeah. people. I've been like camping. I drive in. Uh, Remick Road, I, um, I park, well, usually park up by the right. camp store and, and walk in, because um, they do have gates. We can you can look into that. Anyway, anyway, that was my that was my reasoning, and uh, you know I wouldn't mind. You know, I've got a sister that lives down in Alabama. I wouldn't mind going south for a couple of weeks in January. There's nothing to do with that, buddy. I know. I was just trying to figure out a way that I could do it. Um, you know, full disclosure here. It's any, cold up here. Any anybody else got questions, John? No, I don't, I'm good. I'm no. oh, good. I'll make a motion to accept the. Uh, Zoning officer's budget at uh, 16473 if I did my math you right. You did your math right. Okay. Would you take out $99? Yep. yep. Second. On supplies. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If I could beg the board's indulgence, because it's a rarity that I'm here at the same time that Rebecca is, and an issue came up at the Historic District Commission last night, even though we didn't have a quorum, that I'm hoping to get some feedback on. I mentioned it to you on the phone last night. Um, because as far as I know, we've never encountered this before. If you issue a building permit mm -hmm. to John Doe, and then six months after you've issued that building permit, which is good for two years, John Doe sells the property to Jane Smith, mm -hmm. does that building permit transfer to Jane Smith if she's planning on completing the project that John Doe started? Or does Jane Smith have to come in and completely reapply? What I have done in the past is ask the new owner to reapply for yes. the same permit okay. under their name, right. and I have waived the permit fee since it is no cost to the town. Yeah. But I truly can't condone someone a building permit under the name of someone to own the property. I, I want the permit and the property owner to match. Yes. So I consider it a um, uh, desk, yeah. a bookkeeping process, a housekeeping process. The reason I ask is because we have a property in, in the Lords Hill District where we approved, uh, we signed off on a certificate of approval for a lot, for a house uh, with attached garage slash barn to be built. Um, the person has since put the lot up for sale but part of the real estate advertisement includes something to the effect of house plans for this lot have already been approved by the Historic District Commission, and I'm just concerned that perhaps someone buying it, because apparently a sale of the lot is imminent, um, might think that that means that they can just use the certificate of approval for the previous person without having to come back to the commission. And well, I like I said, we've I never encountered that. The district might be yeah. in a different position because you're actually not issuing a permit to a person. You're issuing... No, um, you issue it to a person. Yeah, you issue it to a permit, but you're issuing architectural guidelines. Right. Which is different from giving someone permission. I mean, maybe I'm splitting hairs here. But I, I, I really don't know. I mean, yeah, but I mean the guidelines I've Is, is I this use, something that you're commission and you need um, to work out? Because, I mean, the regulations, for example, have nothing in it. I will say that that's not unusual for 
a real estate listing to say the permits are in place, to even say a septic design is in place. I think, I think this is probably for you guys to work yeah, on. Well, but well, you all are the, uh, the ultimate authority as far as zoning regulations in the town, as far well, as how the regulations are in place. Well, Rebecca, or you, you can discuss that with Rebecca, and if you can't come to a can, you know, consensus, we can take it off. Well, I have a basket of placeholder for dollars. Right now, I'm going to amend the historic district commission budget, the uh, printing and office supplies to a dollar instead of uh, zero. Yeah. zero. Fine. Any more discussion on this? Just, Just going to change the yeah. amount at the bottom and make a new motion for it. New total. Uh, he had uh, 1035, 10 is it? 1036. 1036. 1036. Make Second. a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, there you go. All right, Eric, we took care of that. All right, one last item. You've had almost two hours to think about it. Oh, um, I wasn't focused on it. What was I thinking about? Oh, Deanna. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'd like to have somebody who's engaged in, the, in what's going on in the community that has a good sense for what's taking place. Um, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I just maybe go out and reach out to Edith to see if she's willing to do it. And if she's not, that's fine. You know, at least. But I'm, not, I'm not sure she's going to know the interview questions to ask John and Deanna. Yeah. Has has a better inkling well, of some of the questions that could be asked. It's not. It's not a disparaging comment on Edith, but. She just basically is not involved with the day oh. stuff. Do you want to be I don't think I Well, well I would just like to reach out to someone else, that's all. You know I mean? And if they say no, no. no. I'm sure she, I'm sure Edith is quite capable of asking questions. That, that I can tell you, uh, Edith Sharp. So, I mean, that's just me. And if she says no, then I'll take the end. If she says yeah, well then, you know what, maybe we... Keep everyone off the hook and keep everyone clean, and that's it. I I, I don't really think that, the, that Edith has focused on the issues of the community and the law enforcement and, and what's taking place. I think Edith does for Meals on Wheels and is you know a great citizen and has a lot of uh, contributed a lot of time to a lot of things. But this is an issue where I think it's. I think it's a little more focused in an area that is probably not in need of wheelhouse so much. So I, Tim Eldridge, I thought, was a great candidate. Um, sorry that he can't uh, Well, he can't do it, it because he works. Right. Uh, he said he couldn't do it because it's the first day of school bus safety week and he has to do it. Uh, right. So, um, I, I think that Deanna is much more in tune with the community as a, as a, as a whole at large. Um, I don't, but I see that Edith looks at a different aspect of the community, the older folks that can't get out. And, the, you know, it's a, another issue. You know, you get the other part of the other generation. Uh, 
I mean, it, like I said, I, I'm throwing it out there. I'm not saying no to Deanna. I have nothing against Deanna, but I say, you know what, me personally, I would reach out to Edith and ask her if she would do it. Her husband did it. Her husband was a pastor. And I'm sure he didn't have all the questions written down, but he did ask quite a few good ones from the other part, the other side of the coin. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I'm not arguing or disagreeing with anybody. I'm just throwing that out there. No, I, I appreciate the, uh, the point you well, made. Well, I'm, I'm glad you do. <laughs> I just... Um... I don't think we should be handpicking anybody. What do you want to do? Well, just what I said. We can we can elect not to have a citizen on there then. Just let the let the pro, pros do it. Fine. Then I'm okay with that too. Done. That way we won't have an impasse here. Yep. Let's get it right from the uh, law enforcement folks. Yeah. All right. That's Good. fine. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Good. All right. No idea. Hmm. No one the end. We'll just let the front door. Just let the car do it. Okay. Let the door do it. Good. Um, so if we're an old business, I don't know. If we can be. Okay. We can be any kind of business you want. Uh, I want to go back to the... It was never, it, there was never a motion to accept it, but it was a cash handling... Um, policy put together by uh, Brian, the town administrator, and you fellas signed it. I said there were things in it that I would not sign it. One of the things when we had a work session on it was to be continued after our banking move. Uh, some of that has to do with some statutory uh, regulations that allow us to kind of influence some things should things happen in a certain way we needed to intercede to the level we could. Um, we do have a cash handling policy in the personnel policy, for one thing, that doesn't coincide with the way this is laid out. This one's the, laid out much better. The second thing is this board has no authority over any other elected official to which we are directing the treasurer to do things that has not been agreed to, also to the tax collector, town clerk, which she didn't really fully appreciate when I talked to her about it prior to us having a meeting because we did not have a work session with any of these people involved. I think if you, we get Deanna in here, you might find a few things that she doesn't really, in hindsight, want to go be involved with, as well as a lot of this stuff about funneling money to the tax collector or town clerk's office that's from other departments is supposed to go through that department, our selectman's office, and there's a second statute on the amount of money that must be remitted from our office to the tax collector. And there's a lot of things in here about uh, taking the liability, uh, for instance, and the responsibility. Should Deanna's not have $1,500 and that need to go to the bank with that money. She may have a remittance from this office which would force her to travel a different day, an extra day, an extra trip. Uh, as well as there's a whole bunch of accounting things here that are getting dumped on Deanna for uh, no compensation. So I would say there's a lot to revisit here and I think that we need to have Deanna in the room to do it. And one of my biggest concerns, I told you before, is we have certain things at our disposal to influence the treasurer, whomever that person should be now in the future, is to a banking relationship. Um, there's banks that are in Rochester. That's my primary bank. There's no branches up here. If I was the treasurer, I might say I want to do business in Rochester. And you can't stop me from doing that. The only thing you could do is, if you had it in your policy by statute, is say, well, we're not going to authorize anybody other than you or the deputy treasurer to take the funds out of this building. So therefore, the onus would be on the treasurer to have to take that money to Rochester. Therefore, with common sense, might say we're going to bank locally. So there's a lot here that concerns me on moving this forward. And before you make a motion to accept that and make that a real policy, I think you should do your due diligence and meet with those elected officials you seem to think are 
somebody in this policy seems to assert that we're going to tell them how to do their process, the procedure, and to accept responsibilities that is not theirs. Um, that's all. Do you want to revisit that in a, in a work session with Deanna in here? Sure. Good. Well, thank you for indulging me on that one. Um, yeah, just, just, I'm not in favor of putting in a ton of new roadblocks into a policy around the treasurer position. I don't think it's an issue, and I don't want to create an issue with additional roadblocks. They're not roadblocks. They're, they're the statutes that the state has put in. They're clear, and we don't have to write them into a policy, but I'm not going to sign anything we're writing them out of, as well as you're trying to tell other people you must accept this money from, say, the transfer station. You must keep records of it. You must give receipts of it. You must take that money now. That's to common order. practice, Mike. It That's might be common practice, but you can't say that. You can't demand that. And I don't think Deanna realized initially what that was. I well, don't think she looked through but that very thoroughly. That's what I'm saying. Well, we're I think session we need to dis have a discussion because you But I believe in having a tracking system that's a little tighter than well, the one we've used in the past. There, there's also, in, in the personnel policy, it lays out how you handle money from town departments in and, that office. And we've talked about the fact that we're going to review that entire policy. Well, that is... This that is, is part of that policy. The selectman's office, where that money is supposed to go, is where it should go. And as far as I'm concerned, that's where it needs to go. And all the accounting and liability should be in our office for those departments. The town clerk's tax director, they, they do their thing over there. Um, I don't see that this gets dumped on on that office, but then again, you guys can all decide, the two of you can say yeah, yeah. and Deanna mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. say agree mm -hmm. to it, and that's fine with me. I'm just pointing out, I think it's flawed. So a greater discussion should take place, and then what you guys come up with is that is my product. Right? I'm good. Can we do it at the next session or no? Sure. Uh, if we can fit it in, I'd be happy to discuss it. And okay. Deanna's usually here late on a Thursday, so we can figure out how to make that work. That'd be great. Okay. Super, thank you for that. Um, and that's all I have. And you're going to get back. I, I'm really concerned about the $70,000. I don't want to beat it to death, but I am very concerned about the, if we have to ask the taxpayers for 70000 I know it's a loan, but you have to still. I don't know how it works, John, so we, I, I can't say that that's no, not, I, I, you know, I'm just going to raise the money. I do know this. Permitting is getting tighter, as uh, the gentleman from HEB was in saying. Oh, yeah. And so the costs are going up for engineering and permitting. And if you wanted to change the culvert out at Province Lake before it fails, it's going to cost money. There's one thing to get free money, and there's another thing to pony it all up on the backs of the taxpayer. Yeah. Either way, I don't know how this works out. So just let when me you get an answer. answer. When you yeah, when you get an answer. answer. I'll be, I get it, you'll get it. Yep. Yeah. I'll make sure the office gets it so everybody can get it, and it'll be available to one and all. Yeah, perfect. Anything else? Anybody? Public comment? No? Going once, going twice. Going twice? Make a motion adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.